Those opposed, motion carried. Then there's the minutes from June 14th. Makes a motion to approve the report. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Supervisor Hardy, seconded by Supervisor Wilford to approve the minutes as, as printed from June 14th. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. At this point, we open the floor for public comment. No action will be taken. Uh, we cannot take action on anything that is not on the agenda. But this is your chance, if you're not on the agenda, to make a comment. Any public comment? Any public comment? Third call, any public comment? Seeing none, was there any supervisor reports? We'll move on to the first hearing. The Planning and Zoning Committee meeting and public hearings be considered today, Tuesday, July 12, 2022, are open to the public. Anyone present may speak, providing they stand up and identify themselves and have filled out a notice of public appearance sheet, which are located in the box by the entrance door. Anyone attending by phone or Zoom meeting may speak, provided they identify themselves by name and address before doing so. We are recording these proceedings, so it's important that you state your name and address before addressing the committee. We request that you do not interfere with or interject comments while another person has the floor. The chair will permit adequate time for anyone wishing to speak and may compel the attendance of witnesses. The following hearings have been published as class two notices in accordance with chapter 985 of the Wisconsin statutes and will be heard by this committee. If I mess up your names, I forgive me. Um, first one is Dennis A. Ism, Michael L. and Sandra A. Bebezo, uh, Caesar A. Saxiris, Sydney Brooks and Dana Howard. Next one is Daniel J. and Ruth Ann Burst. And last one is Warren C. Worth. The County Zoning Committee is a delegate unit of the County Board by ordinance to consider zoning ordinance amendments and decide conditional uses. The Zoning Committee is interested in hearing all pertinent evidence. Witnesses in favor of the application will be called first, and those opposed second, and then others. After each witness has appeared, he or she may be questioned by the committee. Persons present who are not appearing as witnesses will be allowed to propose relevant questions to be put to the committee. However, the chair reserves the right to rule on relevancy and no member of the audience will be allowed to give testimony without being sworn. Because the record of this hearing is being recorded, it is imperative that each witness or speaker identify themselves and their interests in the subject matter of this hearing before speaking. Please speak in the direction of the recorder on the presentation table. A time limit on the presentations may be imposed. I do request that you avoid repetition and limit your remarks to the subject matter being considered. Neither the committee nor your neighbors will benefit from hearing statements that repeat opinions, which have already been expressed or that relate to matters other than the case before the committee. Personal attacks or abuse of testimony and gross hearsay, uh, rumor or gossip will be ruled out of order by the chair subject to immediate appeal to the majority of the committee. With that, we will call the first public hearing to order. Perfect purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Dennis A. Isham, located in the northwest corner of the northeast corner, in the northeast corner of the northwest corner of section seven, government lot one, town of Caledonia, lying along Shoreview Drive, fire number N2060, Packer County, Wisconsin parcel 02-07-51-3 for the conditional use permit. Recreational vehicle in excess of 30 days in the private recreation and forestry district on approximately 1,700th of an acre. Will the secretary read the names of the person notified of the hearing? Bill Abba, town chair. Emily Miller, town clerk. Carol DeVia, town supervisor. Vance Cadu, town supervisor. Department of Natural Resources, Dale Resnick. Artith Isham. Wapaka County Corporation Council, 
Lionel Massey Jr. and Amy M. Isham, Dennis A. Isham, David G. and Sherry L. Kinsman, Lewis and Ashley Mallow, LLC, Gary McClanahan, Sheldon W. Roosh, and Scott G. and Regina L. Thayer. Thank you. I hereby direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has conducted an on site inspection of this property. The committee will now hear the application for Dennis K. Isham. Will the applicant or their agent please come forward and be sworn into testimony? If they are present by telephone or Zoom meeting, please identify yourself to be sworn in. Is the applicant here? Please come up here. Please raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat there. Please state your name and address and tell us what the application is about. My name is Dennis A. Aishan. 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 Now we got it right. <laughs> Old English. Um, here on behalf of my mother, she owns that property. She wants to put in a travel trailer. Took out the old one. Yeah. How did you get it out? Did you need the wrecker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they tore it up. Is the uh, uh, it's not that it matters. I'm just curious. Is that a, a shared driveway? It, it's not a yeah. town road. I don't. Yeah, I own the trailer in the back. Okay. My daughter and son-in-law live in the the double wide. Oh sure. Damn. Yeah. So you're just replacing something that had been there, right? Okay. Right. Yeah. So then for the record, you have some type, some form of signature facilities on the property. Yeah, there's a septic tank, there's water, electricity. And we usually require reconnect permit for that through our office, so that's a little bit more sanitary stand. Um, this property is also located in the floodway, the floodplain of three right. quarters of the RV we kept mobile at all times for that in case there's a flooding event. Okay. Um, anything else? Is there any other questions from anybody? I talked to the guy from Illinois when I was in there. He said, You're wonderful people and you've been there a long time, and your granddaughter should be able to come there and visit grandma. Thank you. The other thing I should add too, with uh, we, we with recreational vehicles, we don't consider them to be structures. So in terms of structural setbacks, none are required unless imposed upon. Uh, right. We know a deck cannot be connected or anything. Like right. That. right. Now, other structures do require setbacks. Just a question to ask: They look like some of those. Are those holding tanks on the right on them, or all of them? The septic tanks. Yeah. Are they? A... Yeah. They're higher up, I noticed. Yeah, they got That's tall risers. When, and, uh, when you're in the floodplain, they have to be elevated two feet above. Uh, as I see, they're above this. Yeah. I'm just glad they can connect into one that's there. I thought yeah. that might be the kicker. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I think that one went in at the same time as the, uh, the, the manufacturer home next door. Well, there's plenty of them in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is this a new trailer? It will be. She was going to go buy one because California said go ahead and buy one. We're not. I wouldn't go into it. Got approval. <laughs> and then the only other question or comment I have since it's not a town road is I don't know. How, I guess you all have your ways of getting in and out, but boy, if you meet somebody, I don't know. Fine. They're the chain that got put across. The guy that backed out ahead of me, then he went out towards where most of the stuff is. And I thought, oh, when I go out, I'll go out that way rather than trying to meet somebody here. And then the guy was there, and I talked to him from Illinois, and they just put the chain back up and said, most people come in on the fire lane road is what he called it. I don't know what the fire lane road is. Does it come through the campground? It must be. I don't yeah, know. I didn't go that way. I came in on the raw Oh, that would make more sense. And he said, and he told me that only the couple places where you are use that road. There's only three or four 
Right. So he said, don't worry, you probably won't meet the button. So I got out of there without it. Had a nice challenge. It was a nice challenge. That corner you can get to there. Right. Well, that's where that chain, like, he was stringing it across after I got done with fucking at yourself and taking a picture. <clears throat> If there's no other questions, uh, if you want to return to your seat and just stick around a little while till we uh, see if there's any other testimony and okay. uh, get, get your hearing uh, finished up. All right, thank you much. Is there any other testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Third call, any further testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony? Any letters? Yes, I have the town recommendation form uh, filled out by Ardeth Aisham, uh, parcel number 02075113, current zoning district of private recreation and forestry. What are the existing uses of adjacent lands to this parcel and are they compatible? Yes, the requested use is consistent with current property use. There are several other RVs in the area. Is the proposal consistent with the town vision statement as found in the town comprehensive plan indicated as yes? The town's vision is for orderly development and growth to be deferred to Wilcatcher County zoning ordinances. Is the proposal consistent with town goals, objectives, and development strategies as found in the town comprehensive plan also indicated as yes? And they reference four different sections, um, pages two through 12, 4A, sections one, two, and three, pages two through eight, uh, section three, B, point three, section pages two through nine, indicated as policies, and pages two through three, chapter three, vision, goal three dash one. If applicable, please look, list recommended conditions for the Wapaka County Planning and Zoning Committee to consider. The Planning Commission recommends that Mrs. Heisham abide by the two ordinance and, ordinances involved. Um, S.6.5 parent 13 and S.4.3 parent 12. Please attach any additional comments, minutes, or information further supporting the recommendation. Mrs. Isham is well known among the current residents and they are in favor of her being there amongst them. The Planning Commission read two testimonials to that effect during the meeting. Town Plan Commission recommends approval signed by Sherry Fudge dated May 19, 2022. Town Board also recommends approval signed by Phil Abba and Emily Miller, both dated May 16th of 2022. Thank you. Does the Planning and Zoning Office have a recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in light of the Township's position on this, we are also in favor of this application being approved with the conditions that they um, obtain a reconnect permit from the Sanitary Department and also that the recreational vehicle remain rule ready and be capable of being removed from the property. Okay, so there's just those two conditions, uh, pretty standard. I would say so. Any other questions from the committee? So you said for removal for 180 days. So it has to come off or it can just has to prove that it's well Okay, all right, all right. So if there's a flooding event, it can be removed. All right, thank you. So it could sit there a whole year, correct, correct. Okay. with wheels on. That's correct. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other questions. Uh, in order to have a motion to approve this conditional use permit. I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second it. Moved by Supervisor McClellan, seconded by Supervisor Wilfer to approve this conditional use permit. Uh, roll call McClellan. Aye. Wilfer. Aye. Artie. Aye. Betterwitz. Aye. Nygaard, yes. Motion carries. So I, I caught a lot of fish ahead of that place. Last one, not fish. <laughs> I'm supposed to keep that secret. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a motion to close this hearing? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second. Moved by Supervisor Hardy, seconded by Supervisor Wilford to close this hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll. Um, We'll call the second public hearing to order. Uh, the purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Michael L. and Sandra A. Leviso, located in the northwest corner of northeast corner of section 16 town of Union, lying along State Road 110, Packer County, Wisconsin, 
parcel 19-16-12-1, for a petition for a zone map amendment from private recreation of Porch Street to agriculture retention within the farmland preservation area on approximately 38 acres to accommodate boundary line adjustment. Uh, will the secretary please read the names of persons notified for this here? Gary Shane, Tom Chair, Sharon Olson, Tom Clerk, Walter Streeby, Tom Supervisor, Marcy Wentworth, Tom Supervisor, Dennis Wangelski, District Supervisor, Wisconsin GOT, North Central Region, Kelly Nicklaus, and David Burette, Michael and Sandra Levisau, owners, Brian Levisau, agent, Alpaca County Corporation Council, Leroy M. Bardo, Harry E. and Fanny C. Born Trader, Dennis R. and Virginia C. Lushke Revocable Living Trust, Kayla R. Guyette and Colton F. Table, Robert R. Hansen, Arthur L. Jr. and Bobby Joe Petke, SRF Incorporated, Robert A. and Cynthia J. Zills Revocable Trust. I hereby direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as part of the record of these proceedings. Committee has conducted an on site inspection of this property. Committee will now hear the application from Michael L. and Sandra B.A. Lepiso. Will the applicant or their agent again please come forward and be sworn in to testify? If they are present by telephone or Zoom meeting, please identify yourself to be sworn in. I can swear you both in at the same okay. time. Please okay. raise your right hand. You swear the testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Uh, take seats. State your names and addresses and uh, tell us what the request is about. Okay. I'm Michael Levizel. Um, address is PO Box 958 Manilow. Ryan Levizel, 706 Maple Street, Manilow. Is your physical address for mine? Uh, I don't. That's no, that's, that's fine. That's, that's just that's confusing. Fine. I live in London, like PO Box in Manilow. So that's, that's, that's your address. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, uh, boundary line adjustment, where I guess I wasn't exactly sure where that went. Is there an adjacent parcel or? So the, and correct me if I'm wrong, I come off the real estate, but there's parcel to the north that's also under the same ownership. Yes, right. And you guys are looking at reconfiguring the lot line between the two of them uh, to kind of even up the acreage for yes. a more even division. Uh, the property directly to the north of it is currently zoned as agriculture retention. Um, the subject property that we're talking about today is currently zoned as PDRF for private recreation and forestry. Uh, zoning ordinance requires that there be only one zoning district per parcel. Um, so in order to accommodate that boundary line adjustment, we have to change this parcel to agricultural retention. Uh, preferred land use map for the township's comprehensive plan and also the county's comprehensive plan recognizes this as an agricultural area, which is consistent with what they're Did you survey that then? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm trying to think where the line is. And typically, okay. if we're if we're dealing with something that, that if it wasn't the whole parcel, it would have required that. Oh, okay. I was trying to understand that. Because normally, when you survey it out, days it doesn't end up where you think it is. Yeah, true. Should have kept the tavern. <laughs> That's years ago. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. I think we drove that years ago when I hunted with a Pepsi game. Oh, oh okay. they did then. Yep. I think Whiskey's on that at one time. Whiskey Farm went somewhere there too. Well, that was to the east. Across the road. Yeah. 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 Yes, what we're looking at doing is just being able to combine the two parcels, split it down the middle so my brother Brian and brother Kevin could buy half. Sure. There's a tavern on the corner there. Many, many years ago. Yeah, across the so so yep. 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 a little yellow lizard. Gotcha. Well, Kwanzaa that sits on that. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's the cable. Yeah, yeah. That's what I got. Okay. Well, uh, I don't think I have any other questions. Uh, anybody else? I'll make a motion to approve it. Okay, I got a call for your testimony. Okay. But Hold that thought. Thank you. If you guys want to return to your seat, we got a call for more testimony and go through the process here. Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any? Yes. Gary. 
You swear a testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. So have a seat. Uh, state your name and address, even if we know who you are. <laughs> Been here too many times. <laughs> name is Gary Shane. I live at N8851 Ridgeview Lane, Manuel. And uh, we are the Town of Union and SRF Incorporated are in favor of granting this zoning change. So when you say SRF Incorporated, the adjacent property owner to the Correct. Right. 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 Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Gary's is just off frame of this picture, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just before you turn. How, how did they know to bring this to your committee? Because <laughs> I just asked them the question. Well, a lot of people don't always know what to do. We're very open. We publish all of our minutes on the internet and stuff like that. We have a web page so people know that they need to do this. Most people know. Yeah. I would say the Tony Union does a great job of getting the word out on, on what needs to happen. And, and the property owners contacted our office to see what they needed to do as well. Good. Been very good. Yeah. Thank you. And I've also hunted that land too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in favor of this application? Third call, any testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony? <laughs> Are there any letters? Yes, I have the town recommendation form uh, listing Michael and San Sandra Levisau as owners and Brian Levisau as the agent for parcel 19 16 12 1 on 38 acres. Current zoning district is private recreation and forestry, PVRF. Proposed zoning district is agriculture retention, AR. What is the proposal? What will be the proposed use of the parcel if the rezoning is approved, indicated as ag and forest? What are the existing uses of adjacent lands to this parcel and are they compatible? Indicate this agriculture. <laughs> is the proposal consistent with the preferred land use map as found in the town's comprehensive plan? Indicated this, yes. It states the preferred land use for this parcel is agriculture as found in the town comprehensive plan. Is the proposal consistent with town goals, objectives, and development strategies as found in the town comprehensive plan? Also indicated as yes. States section 1.3, Town of Union 2040 Vision, pages one through five, states the goal is to maintain the viability, operational efficiency, and productivity of the town's agricultural resources for the current and future generations. Town Plan Commission recommends approval signed by Jerry Henschel, dated June 6th, 2022. Town Board also recommends approval signed by Gary Shane and Sharon Olson, both dated June 6th, of 2022. I also have an email from Kelly McLaus at the DOT. It says the only comments we have is any improvements to the existing connections will require a permit. We currently do not have any permits on file for the field entrances. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Does the planning and zoning office have a recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In light of the township's position, the consistency with the preferred land use map, both on its own and county level, we have a recommended approval of the application as well. Okay, thank you. Is there any other questions that the committee has? Okay, any other questions? So we've been ordered to have a motion to approve. This is a, a zone map amendment. Well, now I'll make that motion again. Thank you, Joe. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Supervisor McClone, seconded by Supervisor Wilford to approve this zone map amendment. Uh, Roll call vote. Go. Aye. Wayne. Aye. Cindy. Aye. Aye. Dwayne. Jim. Aye. Motion carries. Is there a motion to close the hearing? I make the motion to close the hearing. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll start. Moved by Supervisor Hardy, seconded by Supervisor Wilford to close the hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. On to the third hearing. Okay, with that, we call this third hearing, public hearing to order. The purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Caesar A series located in the northwest quarter or northwest quarter of Section 5, town of St. Lawrence, lying along Wazero Road, fire number E2902, Packer County, Wisconsin. 
Parcel 18-05-22-2 for petition for a zone map amendment from agriculture retention to rural residential on approximately uh, 0.5 acre to create a zoning lot across township lines due to a parcel line setback infringement. Will the secretary now please read the names of the persons notified of this hearing? David Marcy, town chair. Jackie Byer, town administrative assistant. Ron Wilkie, town supervisor. Bruce Cady, town supervisor. Calvin Price, town chair. Doug Hines, town clerk. Gary Sitch, town supervisor. Jeffrey Opper, town supervisor. James Nygaard, District 9 Supervisor, Caesar Sires, Wapaka County Corporation Council, Paul Bett Farms Incorporated, John L. Mellum, and James L. and Charles Foster. I hereby now then direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has conducted an on site inspection of this property. The committee will now hear the application for Caesar A series. Will the applicant or their agent please come forward and be sworn in to testify again? If they are present by telephone or Zoom meeting, please identify yourself to be sworn in. Thank you. To spread a testimony, you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Please have a seat, state your name and address, and tell us what the application is about. I am Sandra Cyrus, representing Caesar Cyrus at East 2902 Wasroot Road. Um, the area is a residential, rural residential area. Yeah. So, and it's, it is right on the Helvetia and St. Lawrence line. And then there's a, a, a power line easement too. I, I'm assuming I have a similar power line go through uh, part of my land and it's like a 60 foot easement there too. So yeah, that, that must go right down the township line, I suppose. Yeah. Is that what the red state armor stakes were there? I think they were, they look more like a survey marker. There was, there was lap with, uh, is, are they survey markers? There are survey marker uh, flags that are on St. Lawrence and the St. Lucia area. And then there's holes representing yeah. those areas as well. Yeah. We, we, you could see the lap, those little wood sticks sticking up. So, mm -hmm. so this is just, uh, Get a brought into compliance and, and uh, get a, a, a normal lot out of it. This is right. the end result. Okay. To be able to, to combine them, yeah. Yeah. to combine them, and you know, taking into consideration we're combining them as a zoning parcel and not as an actual. We're not changing the legal boundaries or the corporate boundaries of the town lines. We're just creating. So what we're doing is we're getting rid of the setback associated with the, the line in the down way down. The so in terms of assessments and things like that, but we'll still be getting two tax bills on it, right. just the zoning lot to take care of that, that interior lot. So there, there's there's a tax bill from St. Lawrence and a tax bill from Helvetia in whatever part of what building is on one side is on that assessment. Yep, typically the assessors talk to one another, the townships talk to one another, sure. kind of figure out who's gonna get what out of what. Sure. Mr. Chairman, just a question. What? What precipitated this? Uh, there was a house that had burned down. Yes. That's correct. Um, and then when it was rebuilt, there were some issues with the proximity to the interior property. Um, it, it was a previous property, or not, not the Cyrus? Um, Thanks. Cyrus, yes. Yeah. Cyrus, um, previous property owner built it. It was too close to that interior property. It had been well communicated and it had been surveyed beforehand, so everybody should have known where, where, where it was. Um, it wasn't. Did they use existing well and septic when they put the new house? Or? Good question. I don't know. Um, I would say though that we would have made sure everything works. It's just, oh, yeah. I'm wondering if that's why the house was put where it was, so if it was oh. to make the same connections. I I could say one way or the other. Yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah, I'm sure there was. I'm sure there was a reason that it went where it was. Sure. Yep. So absolutely, you're right. What you're saying, we're trying to correct it. Is there any questions from the committee?
Well, uh, I'm going to call for more testimony. You want to just stick around till we no get this finished Thank up. You. Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony? Are there any letters? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have the tow recommendation form for Caesar of Cyrus, E2902 Wasp Road, for parcel number 1805222, current zoning district of agriculture retention, AR, proposed zoning district of rural residential, which is RR. Um, what will be the proposed uses of the parcel if the rezoning is approved? It indicates it's residential. What are the adjacent uses of adjacent lands to the parcel and are they compatible? Adjacent parcels are all egg use. Compatibility will not change as current uses will remain the same. Is the proposal consistent with the preferred land use map as found in the town comprehensive plan indicated as yes? Is the proposal consistent with the town goals, objectives, and development strategies as found in the town comprehensive plan also indicated as yes? Town Plan Commission recommends approval signed by David Marcy dated June 6, 2022. Town Board also recommends approval, again signed by David Marcy and Jackie Byer, both dated June 6, 2022. Thank you. Does the Planning and Zoning Office have a recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, absolutely. In light of the township's position, the fact that we're taking care of an issue here, we're absolutely in favor of approving this application. Okay. So, is there any other questions from the committee? We've come across just a few of these. It's not too common. But this year in particular. Yeah. 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 Okay. Every now and then it comes up. Well, if there's uh, no other questions, uh, we'd be in order to have a motion to approve this zone map amendment. I'll make that approval. Thank you, sir. Second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll second. Moved by Supervisor Hardy, seconded by Supervisor Federowitz to approve the zone map amendment. Roll call vote. Federowitz? Uh, yes. Hardy? Yes. Welford? Aye. McClellan? Yes. Nygaard? Yes. Motion carries. Is there a motion to close the hearing? Make that more. Second. Thank you. Moved by Supervisor Wilford, seconded by Supervisor Hardy to close the hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. With that, we'll go to the fourth public hearing. The purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Sydney Brooks and Dana Howard, located in the southwest corner of the southeast corner. In the northwest corner of the southeast corner of section 23 town of Lynn Line along Stex Road, fire number E4354, Beck County, Wisconsin, parcel number 12 23 43 2, for a review of approval of a conditional use permit application, private reception venue, CP 023 2021, in the Agriculture Enterprise District of approximately nine acres. Uh, will the secretary please read the names of the persons who applied at this hearing? Steve Gall, town chair. Colleen McCoy, town clerk. Andy Jensen, town supervisor. Cindy Hardy, town supervisor. Kyle Zabong, Army Corps of Engineers. Department of Natural Resources, Del Resident. Hartman Creek State Park. Cindy Brooks and Dana Howard. Wapaka County Corporation Council. Lee A. and Betty A. Larson, Revocable Trust. Shannon J. and Matthew M. O'Brien, Quantum Dairy LLC, Wayne Strike, Frederick T. Walker, Kathy M. Young, and Andrew R. Moore. I hereby now then direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has not conducted an on site inspection of this property as it is a review. Snyder from the Planning and Zoning Office will now present the staff report for this review. Thank you very much. Um, and I would I would say that Becky Fields, our land use code enforcement officer, was the one that the field work and everything to throw this together for it. But just to kind of surmise what we have going on, um, in June of last year, it was a conditional use permit that this committee decided on uh, for having an event, private event venue on this particular property. 
there were several conditions that were applied to that approval for that. Um, and if you'll bear with me, we'll just kind of step through them one at a time here. The ones with the stars are ones that kind of need attention. And before we do that, I'm going to jump down to parent five, where it talks about the, the annual review to be held at the end of the season on or before November 1st, 2022. Um, that did get bumped up because we did have several complaints over the, the property out there for that. Um, and then we're in some, some concerns in regard to some of the lingering conditions that, that still have to be satisfied. So the first condition that was applied was the frequency of events. Um, two major and two minor events were allowed per month. Major events were defined as events ending at midnight with no guests on grounds after midnight. And minor events were defined as events ending at or before 9 p.m. Based on the venue website and the Facebook page, there were two major events in September of 2021. And our office has also received complaints that there were two major events on back-to-back -back weekends in June of 2022, uh, which we were able to uh, visit and take pictures of while the event was, was occurring for that. Uh, noise, um, music will be turned down at 10 p.m. Doors and windows closed, alcohol and music ends at 11 p.m. We have not received any noise complaints over the property at all or any of the events that have been held. Lighting, no additional lighting will be installed. Parking area will consist of low solar lighting, marking entrances and exits. That was satisfied. Um, the fourth condition was that security officers have to be present at all major events. There has been some concern expressed by the township that there are um, that secu security officers are not present, or if they are present, that they have a personal relationship or are related to the property owners and may be impartial. Um, annual review, we touched on that one a bit. Uh, the no parking signs that was satisfied according to the town chairman. Um, let's see, parent seven, and this is kind of where we get into some of the issues that we still need to resolve on it. Mind if you just scroll down just to touch on those, you can see it as well. Um, the applicant shall obtain a commercial building permit for the structure or obtain a temporary use permit as outlined in SPS 361.312 and SPS 314.015. Documentation of the permit shall be submitted to the Back County Planning Zoning Office. If a temporary use permit is obtained, written verification of the original permit and any subsequent extensions required a minimum of every hundred feet shall be submitted to the planning zoning office. So we've had conversations with the commercial building inspector from DSPS um, on June 28th. And commercial building permit has not been obtained yet for the, the structure out there. And, uh, commercial building inspection has also not been completed. The other option was the temporary use permit, um, which would have to then have approval through the Wide Week Fire Department. That also has not been obtained. We've had extensive conversations with both the commercial building inspector and the fire department. And uh, well, one, the fire department, they're not willing to issue a temporary use permit for the facility <coughs> for it. And they've yet to comply with the commercial building code um, parameters for that. So that's one of the big hangups that we are having. Um, the other one that's highlighted, parent eight there, applicants shall obtain liability insurance for the reception venue, provide written verification of planning and zoning department. Um, prior to yesterday evening, the only thing that we had on file was a quote for uh, from Mount Morris Mutual Insurance Company in November of 2021. Uh, last evening, we did receive that they had um, obtained that. I think it was actually yesterday that they had yep. issued the, the policy for that. Um, we did send out letters to them. I know the staff report says we sent out two letters. We're actually three. One was in December. I'm requesting the information that we, we don't have. And then April, and then again on June after we had received word that uh, uh, events were happening. So we, we have been working with the commercial building inspector trying to figure out you know, how we can get this accomplished for it. I just want to re-emphasize the fact that at the end of the day, I mean, we're, we're trying to get them into a spot where we want them to be able to operate. Um, but we have to be able to operate with some assurance that we're, we're meeting building codes and we're providing safe for people as well. Um, so I think in part, what we're looking for is some guidance in terms of how we're going to proceed with this and how we can help them to get to a point where they, they can operate. And I believe on the line here, we have Lucas uh, Peterick. 
from the Department of uh, Safety and Professional Services. And we also have Tom Cullen from the White Wega Fire Department. So they are online. And also uh, Rodney Shepke, I believe, is he still on the line uh, to give any uh, clarifying comments in terms of their stance when it comes to the city of White Wega's uh, temporary use permit and also DSPS in terms of their uh, stance when it comes to commercial building inspection. And of course, Sydney Brooks is also on the line as well for additional input or, or feedback. Uh, okay, we'll uh, we'll start with the Moviga Fire Department. Uh, Colin, was that his name? Yeah, Tom. Tom, are, Tom, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Tom, what what is your uh, in terms of your uh, the, the the city of Way uh stance on this? Where where do you guys stand in terms of the issuance of the temporary use permit? So for a temporary use permit, um, you need somebody qualified to uh, engineer the structure, and that's going to take that liability. And we do not have anybody on staff that's able to do that. So we have never. Um, issued any temporary use permits and do not plan to. It's just something that's very rarely done. Thank you. Uh, let's see whoever wants to go next. Lucas, you get the Department of Safety and Professional Services? Yeah, you bet. Uh, my name is Lucas Dedrick. I'm the Section Chief for the Department of Safety and Professional Services. And the department stance on these, if there is no temporary use issued by the local fire department on these, then these will need to go through state plan review and approval for the change of use to the building. Um, so yeah, this one would be in violation until it gets plans reviewed, approved, and an inspection done by the department. So Lucas, just to clarify, I mean, regardless of, of the zoning's position on this, I mean, if, if they are operating an event venue out there, they, they would still need state plan approval for the event venue. Is that correct? Correct. Zoning is more land use. Um, this is building use. Zoning has no effect on, on a commercial building code. Uh, just a question. Who takes the initiative or, or where does this where does this go? In other words, is there somebody in your department that's going to come out there or who has to make the next move? Yeah, we've actually got um, an open case on this one. We're waiting to see what comes to this hearing. But what will happen next is our inspection staff will stop out, hopefully get on site. Um, legal team will write orders against the building for violations of not submitting plans for review and approval from the change of use from an agricultural building to a assembly venue. Um, then hopefully we can get some plans submitted, reviewed and approved and get on the right track with this. Lucas, can I ask for a little bit of clarification in terms of the difference between a commercial venue and, and an agricultural type use with this? This qualifies an agricultural type use on the property? No, this is a commercial building. It's an assembly use. Um, they're hosting parties here. It's a venue. Um, agricultural used to be like if I had a farm, you know, and we were hosting agritourism where you're coming to see us milk cows, or if it was an agricultural use for 90% of the goods sold on site were produced on the land owned by the uh, the building owner, then that'd be considered an agricultural use, but we consider these commercial uses as an assembly use um, per our codes in SPS 361. Just, just one last question. What is the timetable you think? From us? Yeah. Uh, we're six weeks out in plan review, so if you got them in today, we'd have plans reviewed and approved in six weeks. Uh, inspection staff could be out as soon as the next week to do inspections. It all depends on what has to be done to bring the building the code. Excuse me, to bring the building into compliance with their codes. Um, like say six weeks, and the ball will be back in their court as far as plan review goes. Though. Thank you. Uh, we've got one more waiting on line. Yeah, we have uh, uh, Sydney. Sydney, would you like to? Uh... Yes, thank you very much. Well, PACA Planning and Zoning Committee, Dana and I thank you for the opportunity to clarify oppositions with our private event venue. We apologize for not being able to be there in person due to work conflicts this week. 
We would like to stress that the only events that we have held are family and close friends events. This includes even our own wedding ceremony and reception celebrations that were private um, to our friends and family as well. Uh, and also just noting that no, anyone is entitled to have their own private events on one's property, which is what we have been doing until our conditions have been satisfied. Uh, as outlined in the packet that you have in front of you, the pictures with covered faces includes Dana and I in the bridal party as they were both family events in September and June. So I know you can't see them, um, but there's bubbles over everyone's faces and Dana and I are present in those pictures. Since approval of our CUP in June 2021, we were initially confused from officials on next steps. Upon sign off of our initial fire inspection that we had done in 2021 by the Wauwega Fire Department, we thought we were approved to proceed, um, which is hence why the start of the Facebook and website page. However, um, again, all social media includes only pictures of our family and were exclusively family events. Since being notified by the planning and zoning department and letters, which again were noted in December, April, and June, in December, um, we have since completely ceased all social media and removed our website until all the conditions were met. With further conversations and letters, um, as Ryan and uh, everyone else has mentioned, we understand the next steps to proceed with inspection. We are currently working towards the final inspection status to satisfy the conditions. And again, as mentioned, as for insurance, our 2021 and 2022 policy was renewed actually yesterday, 7-11-2022, for the 2022-2023 year. And the Planning and Zoning Department has a copy um, of our binder policy on file and confirm receipt. We again would just like to thank you for your consideration and understanding as we work towards finalizing the, our building and electrical inspection for our conditional use permit for the future public events that we plan on having. Thank you. So, Cindy, I just have, I have one question. Uh, you had, so we were notified of a of an event that occurred on June 3rd, and then there was one that occurred on the, the weekend after that. Is that correct? That's actually not correct. Um, there wasn't one on, that would be the 11th. There was one act on the 18th of June, but again, this complies um, with the two major events. But again, these were family events that we had held that were private and were our close family members. So Sydney, again, those two dates were June 3rd and June 18th? Is that correct. So in terms of what the ordinance allows for private events, uh, you're allowed to have one every four weeks. Um, so those, those two events were too close to one another to comply with our private events section that we have in the ordinance for it. Um, not really looking to split hairs here. You know, whatever has mm -hmm. happened, happened, what we're looking to get is the commercial building code um, taken care of for this. So to obtain a commercial right. building permit, um, inspections, make sure that we're operating a safe venue out there. Do you have a do you have a time frame in terms of what we're operating on here, Sydney? Have you been in contact with an architect or somebody to work with you on those plans? Absolutely. And this was presented back in June 2021 um, with the approval of our CUP when we had our engineering plans, we had our architect, our agricultural architect um, with those plans that were submitted. And um, we plan on you know submitting those over to the uh, appropriate entity to get that initiation started. Do you know when, do you have a timetable? Because you have them prepared right now. So it's a matter of just getting them sent in. Are you, are you still there? Sorry, um, again, my internet connection is, is unstable. Um, was there a further question or did you catch my response? I, I think we've missed your response. Let me ask again. So do you, you have the plans ready, prepared now? It's just a matter of getting them sent in or do you have to get them still prepared? No. So again, I'll just repeat. Um, we, in the 
the approval of our June 2021 meeting um, with the committee. We also submitted our plans of the engineer, the agricultural architect, and we have all those plans and blueprints ready to send um, to the appropriate entity to initiate the process. So just to clarify, the appropriate entity being the Department of Safety and Professional Services, is that who you're talking about? Okay, because the reason why we're looking for some clarification is because you're saying that you had the engineering plans prepared a year ago, right? Correct. Okay, but they just weren't sent into the Department of Safety Professional Services. Correct. Um, as I mentioned, we just had confusion on our end that... Um, you know, we weren't sure who to contact. We were kind of going around in circles, not knowing the process um, with the Wawiga Fire Department, um, with the temporary use permit. Um, so now that we know, it's been clarified. So just one more time to nail down a, a date here. What, uh, when are you looking at submitting the plans to DSPS for your commercial building code? As soon as possible. Any other questions from the committee? Just a question, comment. I mean, I understood what she said. It's just that, um, what do we do next? I mean, is there a deadline you're going to set, or is there what's going to happen? Well, we already have a review set up for November of, uh, of this year. Of this year. Okay. The By then, it line, should be done. Then that's why we should be completely satisfied. Uh, the, the concern came in because we had found that they were we, they were in fact holding events out there without the without the permits in place. I'll call for more testimony. Is there any other testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in favor of this application? Third call. Any testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Yes. Please. You swear the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. State your name and address and uh, explain to us what, what, uh, what the story is here. Um, Shannon O'Brien, E4293 Stacks Road, Wyoming, Wisconsin, 5493. Um, maybe give myself very emotional about this whole topic. <clears throat> um, Dana and Sydney purchased that property, as you know, to in the event to turn it into a, an, an event venue. Um, I have attended all of the meetings on this and have firmly stood my ground on explaining why I am against it. And this is a perfect case in point. If we refer to everybody as friends and family, or events to get away with putting through what you want to do with your property. That's not abiding by the rules and regulations of the conditional use permit at all. None of it has, and that's been my, my point this whole time. It's just been being used to do whatever, whenever, and being allowed to proceed. And the point of the conditional use permit, everybody is aware, the permit is given to you and you have to meet the guidelines of the permit. You cannot operate doing business or anything of the venue without meeting those conditions prior to doing the event. And these events are happening without meeting these on now because of confusion. But every neighbor in the neighborhood understands the conditional use permit. So I don't understand how without becoming grudgeful or angry, anybody else is being heard or listened to when it comes to this happening. It, it's direct violation. The conditional use permit at the town level was put through and passed with the expectation that this stuff would be met. And none of it, some of it is met, but the important things are not being met. There's no security. I have people coming into my property asking me for directions to where the event venue is. But if these people are family, how don't they know how to get to the event? People who set up for the very first wedding, the very first wedding, we're bringing an arch 
I was in my garden, pulled in with their arch because they didn't even know how to get there and asked me, the neighbor, who doesn't even want this happening, how to get to the event. So I'm, I'm frustrated. I feel like there's zero representation for people who don't want this happening. And now we're trying to find ways to help them figure out how to get what they need to be done on this property when it's already happening illegally. So I, I am strictly in opposition of this for the simple fact that every testimony that has happened in favor of this kind of has been made a laughing stock on the grounds of responsibility from Sydney because there was no responsibility. If there was confusion, the communication needed to happen with the direct authorities that it represented this case to make that clear so it was legal. That's all I have to say. Thank you. you. Call for further testimony. Any further testimony in opposition to this application? Any further testimony in opposition to this application? Third call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony? Uh, yes. I just, I just have a question. Is this a repurposed building? This is a barn. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was yep. never designed for this purpose. Not at all. Are there any letters? Wait, there's one. Oh, Mr. Chair, it's not necessarily in opposition or in favor of it. Testify. Yeah, Come up, Steve. Sure. sure. Just want to test me about the give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. So, have a seat. Uh, state your name and address. And you know, all 22, 28, 28, back up, Chair. Uh, I guess cons concerns that I have is, uh, you know, it's a 120 year old barn that was designed for moose hay and cows, cows down below. It wasn't really designed for this. That, that's why it's very important that the, this inspection gets done, you know, and it passes that before we put hundreds of people, whether they're family or friends or who they are in this building. Uh, which hasn't been done yet. I guess some other things that I, th I think about, especially after the accident we had out on D out here, with the it's hard to serve these places out in the middle of, middle of the country from a response time for, for an ambulance, fire, uh, uh, whatever that way. Uh, so I think it's even more important for them to conduct this in a safe way. Uh, I guess the other thing I think about too is if you're sitting out in the storm and a storm comes up, where do a couple hundred people go? I don't know if they have a contingency plan for that or not, but I think that's something to be considered here. So uh, the type of event, the policing of this is, is really difficult. Uh, if, if you don't have an officer there that's independent of, of the operation there, uh, uh, high in the sky, so to speak, I think that's something that, that really needs to be tied into this overall. So, Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, Chairman, I have a question. Uh, uh, she, she alluded to the fact that these were family. Is there an exemption for family? I, I don't know. I don't know the law completely. Well, if there's not actually an exemption. I mean, in, in, you know, in a way of speaking, there is because in our ordinance, it allows for one event every four weeks. The idea of it, the, the legislative intent behind it is that it the allows for the occasional, you know, if you're going to have a reunion and like an anniversary party, you know, if your your daughter's getting married, you want your reception in your backyard, you know, it's yeah, for right. those type of things that happen, that's going to be a, a large event. Anything over 200 people, is going to require conditional use. That's the other portion of that of that uh, provision that we have in our ordinance. And what we are finding is that more and more that's being used in these wedding barns as as a way to say that it's not necessarily being used as a commercial wedding barn, but it's being used for family and friends. It's hard for us as an office to enforce whether or not it is in fact a, a family event or if it is a commercial event. All we know is that it's an event. And in the states, I mean, they've clearly applied for a private reception venue to have these types of events, not necessarily the types of events that everybody has in their backyard. They're occurring on a more frequent basis than we typically see with uh, family events, anniversaries, things like that. So I'm glad to hear that they're getting things together for the commercial building permit. Um, 
where the confusion comes in, I don't know. We've got a pretty consistent message throughout. Um, that aside, though, as long as we're going to get our approvals for that. So how many people could come there more than once a month and not be considered an event? Less than two months. Less than two months. Okay, so these two times you're talking about the third and the 18th or whatever were 200 more people. Well, we don't. We don't know. Okay, so we don't but we don't know what we're doing right now. Okay, thank you. Are there any more events planned for the rest of the summer, family events? Well, so you'd have to ask. Did you hear the question, Sydney? Yep, I heard Cindy. So again, um, Dana and I are having our private ceremony for our own wedding reception, as well as my sister's baby shower um, is going to be there as well. Again, these are private events that one will be in September, one will be in October. These are really, again private, and I'm sorry, that was August and September, not September and October. Both under 200? Absolutely, even under 100. Far under 100. Right, so we're spinning our wheels in grease. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have dates, Sydney, so, we, so the town knows what dates those will be? Yes. August 13th, as well as September 17th. Thank you. So if they're under 200, then. Uh, it's one of our business. Yeah. But just to clarify again, though, Sydney, you, you do have the plans together, ready to submit to DSPS. It sounded like there were six weeks out on that, so these approvals should be obtained before that second event anyway. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. One, one, just one last question. By November 1st, we should be able to put this somewhat to rest. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, I mean, we, we, we should have a resolution by then. Yeah, if they get sent in, that's what we're hearing from DSPS is that they should get feedback by then. Okay. This, is Luke, this is Lucas Dedrick from the state of Wisconsin again. I stated that we have six six week turnaround on plan review. That means I submit my plans today, our plan review staff reviews them, approves them. That does not mean you have an approval to operate the building. There's probably going to be some things that have to be. Um, redesigned, um, remodeled, constructed to meet the codes of today. So just because you have an approval on six weeks from now, doesn't mean that building is going to be compliant with the commercial code at that time. There's probably going to be some stuff that has to be done to bring that building into compliance just to make you guys aware. So I can't guarantee that in six weeks, you're going to have approvals and that building is going to be a okay to, to operate in. Do you come yeah. back? To, do you come back then? And, uh, uh, sign off then when the work is completed to your satisfaction? You bet. My inspection staff will be out there once the work is done, uh, meets the codes. And yeah, we'll be out as soon as that's done. Yes. Um, but like you say, the plans will have to be submitted. Anything in the building that has to comply with today's codes will have to be constructed before we'll come out and do those final inspections and sign off on it. And confirming, we understand what Lucas is saying. And we have, again, those plans that are already constructed for inspection. So you're limited to a family event once a month, less than 200 people until this is all the inspections are, are and all code compliance is in place. And we should clarify with Lucas again. I mean, is there any issues with these other events that we're talking about? I mean, if you're getting down to splitting hairs, I mean, we look at it, a private event as immediate family. You know, I can't speak to what she's got going on here. Um, if it's only okay. private, immediate family, yes, I'm okay with it. Once you get into inviting friends, you know, on the public into the building, then it's considered a commercial building. So then it sounds like the two events that we were talking about with their own personal and their sister, as long as we meet for your purposes, there, there isn't an issue with that. that just like... Mr. Chairman is saying that if we have one event every four weeks that is directly family related, then there shouldn't be an issue with that. Correct. Are you asking me for a I, I correct was on Lucas. that? I mean, I was Lucas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're yeah. asking me for uh, correct on your zoning codes, which I'm not going to get, like no. I stated. 
no, no, if no, it I, meets I was, the intent of a commercial building, then it's going to have to go through plan review if it doesn't have a temporary use. And that's kind of where we stay at. If you have more than your immediate family in the building, immediate family being um, mother, father, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, if you've got friends and extended family in the building, we consider that a commercial building. So if you don't have a temporary use, then I'd say no, but I'm not going to speak to your zoning ordinance is what you require from because you're speaking about 200 and less people. That must be one of your zoning ordinances. I'm not going to speak to that. You're absolutely right. Okay. Yeah. But from our point of view, from the state of Wisconsin's point of view, I think I've made myself pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other testimony in opposition? Just any other testimony? We, everybody's had their chance to speak now. So, are there any letters? No. Are there any other questions from anybody? So, we really can't uh, do a whole lot with this until this inspection and, and uh, compliance is, is in order, correct? I would, say that that's I would say that that's correct. I mean, the, the committee always has lots of latitude involved when it comes to conditional use permits in terms of you want to make any modifications to the condition of this permit. That's certainly well within your rights to do so. It's just a matter of do you feel like it makes sense in this particular situation? Um, you know, as Cindy was saying that she does have engineering plans uh, at the ready, so it, they should be able to get them sent in. You know, we have contacts at the DSPS that so we can verify that they were, in fact, sent in. Uh, you know, so I mean, as we do with all businesses, as long as they're looking, as, they're, as long as you're working with us in good faith towards compliance, we try to work with them as much as possible. Because as a general rule, we want to have businesses succeed. You know, but we got to make sure that we're all still working in the right direction and the same direction towards compliance. And so I suppose it, that's the only thing that I would like to see, as long as we have a, a roadmap in place here in terms of how we're going to get into compliance with some check-in points to make sure that we are still going in the right direction. Because like uh, Lucas was saying, just because you get the plan review gets approved doesn't mean that the work's still not done. And so um, to me, I would like to have, uh, you know, I would not to say we don't have a good lines of communication. I think our communication has been fantastic with the Department of uh, Safety Professional Services. And so I'd like to uh, be in contact with them as the year goes, just to make sure, you know, and we can always bring this back to the committee as well. Um, otherwise, we do have the review already set for November that has already been set. So I guess we could use that. I mean, depending on what you guys think, if you guys want something different, again, you can make any change you, you see necessary. Mr. Chairman, I, regarding listening to all this, what I would like to see, we've got about three and a half months. We'll make some final determinations. If, if everybody can't get their act together by November 1st, then we can set parameters for my program. Yep. Sounds good. So, if you need a motion, I'll make it. Okay, then, yeah, that we do need a motion for this review. So, uh, moved by Supervisor Federowitz, I will start second. I'm abstaining because I've never seen the second, so I'm, I'm staying out. Okay, so. So if we if we do not approve this review, where does that lead us now? Well, I believe that we had the review already and the, the review was so bad. Sure. This, this, is, this is kind of a preliminary review, right? Yep, that is true. Right. And and uh, technically they, they haven't complied totally. No. So, so in that instance, they're 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 on hold as far as proceeding to do this open to the public. That's right. They can do a family event once a month, less than two hundred people. Yes, and that's always been in the in the books. Right. Yep. So that that is compliant with zoning code. Uh, is not compliant with the state's code, but it is compliant with our zoning code. Mm -hmm. So. What action do we take today? We can, November 1st is the, the 12 month. 
number of person system. Yeah. Yeah. Annual review to be held at the end of season or on or before November 1st. So it's already in the books. There's really no further action necessary if you're still good with November 1st. Oh, yeah. The only thing you could do is, is I don't know what you could do. Yeah, there you they're, could limit no more family events from now to November 1st, other than two well, seconds. How are you going to monitor that? Yeah. What if somebody has a little baby in the family and plenty of them show up? I mean, when I was a kid, we used to go to each aunt's house every third week. Somebody cooked dinner and there'd be 25 of us there. Yeah. And that's the exact reason why this law is out of the books. I mean, we, we saw that as being something that happens with families. It wasn't necessarily the tailored to me, but, uh, but we want to make sure that people weren't having issues that we for. Um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes people push the envelope on some of these things and it causes for weird laws to get written. But in this case, it allows them to do that. It's so, pretty interesting. So uh, they're, they're not, correct me, uh, Sydney's still here. They don't have any other events scheduled, nothing for the public now until the review, until all the conditions are satisfied. That's what she testified mm -hmm. to. She had said that on uh, August 13th and September 17th. And those are family events. Those are family events. If it's one wedding uh, reception or wedding, for a wedding and a baby show. Yep. Just a baby show. So I don't know that there's anything to be done here today. We, we've, we've got information, which is useful. Mr. Chairman, we will keep in contact with the Brooks and DSPS to make sure that things are moving forward. Shannon's got a question. I don't know if we close testimony. We did close testimony. Yeah. We moved on to letters. We did. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, if that's the case, uh, we'll just uh, schedule this for. On agenda November before November first, according to exactly how it was decided originally. There was okay. Uh, do we do we need to uh, draft the motion somehow, or does it matter? It's just it fails for lack of a second. Fails for lack of a second. Yeah. Okay. So I think we just close the hearing. Is there a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? <laughs> Moved by Supervisor Fedwick, second by Supervisor Wilfer to close the hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the fifth public hearing. The purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding application for Daniel J. and Ruth Ann Burst located in the southwest quarter of the northeast quarter and northwest quarter of the southeast quarter of section four, town of Royalton, lying along Bear. Lake Road, fire number E5947, Rebecca County, Wisconsin. Parcel number 16-04-42-2 for a review of a conditional use permit, private reception venue, CP-028-2021 in the Agricultural Woodland Transition District on approximately 5.78 acres. Will the secretary now please read the names of the persons notified of this hearing? Gerald Rowan, town chairman. Lori Redemso, town clerk, Marilyn Ebert, town supervisor, Mike, Mike Peters, town supervisor, Jed Holt, Opaca County Public Health, Dan and Ruth Ann Forst, Opaca County Corporation Council, Daniel J. and Ruth A. Forst, Revocable Living Trust, Brian Conroy et al., Robin L. and Sandra L. Donahue, and Edward L. and Patricia K. I hereby then direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as part of the record of these proceedings. The committee again has not conducted an on site inspection of this property as it is a review. Uh, again, Jason Snyder from the Planning and Zoning Office will present the staff report for this review. Thank you. Um, so, in July of last year, um, the first were had a conditional use permit also in front of this committee for very similar to what we were talking about in the last. Hearing with a private reception venue on their on their property out know, there, uh, there were conditions that were applied, um, and one of those conditions was that we have an annual review, which is what we're doing right now. Um, so the conditions that were applied is that well, and 
Very similarly, you'll see here in one applicant shall obtain a commercial building permit for any structure utilized for the venue. Um, currently, they have not obtained a commercial building permit. Um, however, they, they are aware that a commercial building inspection is required um, and beyond the inspections that have been completed beyond the town building inspector. So, what we've been seeing with this one is we had a town building inspector that, that likely didn't know what he was what his abilities were to do on the property for it. He does have a commercial rider on his license, but in talking with these PS, it isn't enough for them to be able to have a commercial building permit satisfied to do that. Uh, so this one too also has to be submitted to the state for commercial uh, building code, um, or I'm sorry, commercial building permit and inspection of the, the property as well. Uh, we'll, we'll keep going through this. Uh, Probably circle back to Lucas to make sure we know what we're talking about as far as uh, DSPS is concerned. Um, all, all parking shall be on the property and adequate space is provided. Spaces shall be provided so as to comply with ordinance requirements. No parking shall be permitted on the road. Uh, currently, they have one wedding reception. The wedding ceremony for the party was held in 2022. Parking was provided on site across the street field. Their website indicates that the venue is booked for July 31st, August 19th to 21st, September 10th, and September 24th. The owner indicated that they have one event booked for August and one event booked for September. The operating uh, hours shall be from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. It wasn't an issue with that at the wedding ceremony that took place was at 1 p.m. and lasted for about an hour and a half. And the approval shall be reviewed in one year. And that is where we are right now. Looks like Becky had touched base with uh, the town chairman, Gerald Rowan. Uh, property owners have been in contact with the town uh, regarding a liquor license that they need to obtain. The town is also pleased with the improvements being made to the, the property. Um, so I'm going to circle back to the commercial building permit one. Again, I think they were kind of led down the wrong road by the, the local building inspector for that. Um, and I, we have Lucas on the line here still. Lucas, can you confirm with us that the but the local building inspector has a commercial rider on the license. Um, talking with Ryan Geiger, it sounds like that it doesn't satisfy for the approvals in this particular case. Can you um, provide us some insight on that? Yeah, no. Um, Ryan Geiger is the authority having jurisdiction there, so he'd be the person to talk to inspection wise. And yes, this is another wedding barn that I don't believe has went through state plan review and approval prior to operation. So I'm guessing this one will probably have to go through plan review and approval prior to the occupancy as a wedding venue. And they have been working with an architect on this particular one. I think they just went to the wrong person to get people. Yeah, but the problem is the problem with these is like, for example, this one's already got a website up. You know, they're advertising as a wedding barn, and none of the modifications have been made to the barn to comply with codes prior to operation. You know, it's kind of we're we're backwards here. But uh, to elaborate on what uh, Jason was saying, I did have a conversation uh, with the architect that they had utilized. Uh, and she had said that she does have uh, the plans at the ready and she has um, sent in to uh, DSPS. And so it sounds like uh, we moved past the, the miscommunication that had occurred between uh, the local building inspector and what's required from the state. And so it does appear as though we're on the right path when it comes to bringing this into compliance when it comes to build, commercial building code inspection. Uh, like Lucas had said though previous, uh, just receiving the uh, an approval on the, your plans does not mean that the actual structure in and of itself is approved. Uh, so we'll have to take that into consideration when we look at time frames in terms of when we'd be able to allow for uh, events to occur here. Uh, but again, it appears as though we've gone beyond the, the problems and we're on the right, we're moving together. And I would say that the, uh, the, the property owner here has been working in good faith on this property you know, in terms of doing the right thing and moving this along. And so uh, it seems like everything is, we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction on this. We, so there was just a bit of a mix up locally, but we got uh, taken care of. What would be helpful for me is if, if I knew what the architect, what the inspectors say needed to be done, and maybe they've got it done already anyway, it, it just hasn't passed the final inspection, well, but it, I mean, can we see? You'll get it, sure you will. You will yeah. So that's that would be helpful for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you got any more you want? We'll, we'll go to testimony now. 
Okay, so in the room, in favor of testimony. This is our testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Have a seat, state your names and address, and uh, bring us up to speed. Dan Burst, E5663 York Road, Manoa. Ruth Burst, E5663 York Road, Manoa. Okay, so uh, you got the inspection done, and they probably made a list of some things they wanted to see different. And, and uh, well, I guess the first thing is basically we went through our, our permit, got a hold of Jerry. And I got a hold of Bob Vista, who was the town or the building inspector. He was out yesterday again and showed me his commercial building card. So we went that path. We basically thought, yeah, he said we didn't have to send plans into the state. I mean, we're not trying to hide nothing. So basically, um, we had an architect in Milwaukee, which was it's sister. My sister, but she's done it for 30 some years. And then we had uh, a structural engineer out of Appleton all of our plans and basically everything is up to that structural engineer plan it's already done so after this then basically ryan geiger was out last week and he inspected everything and he told me all of the changes that that the little changes that we needed to do so that's kind of where we are now and I said, well, we got this one when he come on up in August. Well, he said he's willing to work with us as long as there's no safety issues. As long, and then he'll come out and inspect before that. So I guess, I mean, anybody's willing to come out and look at the barn. We're not trying to hide nothing. We went everything up to code. But like you said, we just got, but he said that we were, that he was a building inspector and he so insists he still is. He called this yeah, morning. We, we talked to him this, uh, just, just to back you up. I mean, we talked to him this morning and he, he had visited our office previously, had us take a photocopy of his license that had a commercial writer on it as well. And we talked to him this morning and he still feels he has the authority to, to do this. So, yes. Um, I mean, but yeah, we've talked to the state to make this everything we can do them. Uh, but, but, so, which you guys are, are absolutely working on. So, it's, it's good. I mean, everything's up to cold. Joan said she didn't submit it because Bob was trying to convince her she didn't have to. So, she goes, When you're done the meeting, I'll be on the phone, I'll hit submit. And Bob told us that we didn't, so we didn't uh, submit it because the architect said it was taking public work. So, it just sounds like there's some offensive of miscommunication with the local on that. Um, we get through the state, we get commercial building permit, or commercial building permit, which should be good. So, yeah. So, can we host the August 20th wedding? Well, let, let's wait to hear back. Wait, uh, it's good to hear that you had Ryan was out there. Yes. And, and, and so as long as, uh, like you say, there's not a, a safety issue when it comes to that. And, and so obviously we're going to be, it's going to be a matter of short, a short order here before we get a, a matter of approval from the state. Well, the state's going to be, like he said, four to six weeks out. <laughs> what he's coming. I know. And, yeah. and Ryan was on and basically it's the stairs. I got it the rail set at 36 inches and he said I need a 42 inch ball factor. So it's just adding another piece on top of that. I mean, we got all the bathrooms are all in, all the plumbing well, rooms, all, the, in. all the electrical, but I can't close the walls up until some inspections. Yeah, done. inspections yeah. done. And it sounds like I can't do that until these plans are approved by the state. So I kind of went backwards on this, but yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'm slide by. So he still says he's, he's he does. Kind of yeah. I, so is his commercial building permit? He gave us the commercial building permit. I so, mean, he dropped them off, and I mean, I paid for them over a year ago. Yeah, right. And it, so technically, it's not. So the thing is, a ton of royalty does not delegate, does not have delegation uh, for a commercial building code. And so he, Bob Bisbee, is in fact a commercial building inspector. That that is that's very true. And we have copies of his license. That is, but he, the the town of Royalton does not have commercial building delegation, so he doesn't have jurisdiction for commercial building within the town of Royalton. And that's why this would need to go to the state because that the town of Royalton is under the purview of the state. And he is an inspector. He's the inspector. Otherwise, for town, he is he is the residential their uniform dwelling code inspector. Yes. Yeah, because he's been out there every time. We paid him nine hundred dollars already in inspection <laughs> fees. Yeah. 
Yeah, just for future reference on this one, any any inspections or any correspondence should go through Ryan Geiger with the department. He's the one that has the authority having jurisdiction on that project. I think that'll help clarify some of the issues too. Came out yes last week. Last week he was in. So so uh, Lucas, uh, uh, I guess I have a favor to ask of you in that there's been good faith shown here. They were given bad advice. And could this application be expedited a little bit on your end, please? Unfortunately, I'm not in charge of the plan review staff and they don't expedite plans anymore. So unfortunately, no, I'd recommend getting them in as soon as you can. And like I say, they'll get turned around in four to six weeks, but we don't expedite plans anymore. Well, Lucas, Ryan, Ryan Geiger is the individual that reviews the plans, is that correct? No, Ryan Geiger is my inspector. He's a commercial building inspector. We've got... 22 plan reviewers, architect, engineers, and office that do our plan review for us. We've got an actual plan review staff as well as inspection staff. So Ryan Geiger is going to be the guy out in the field doing the inspections, not the guy reviewing the plans. Do you, do you have any advice for us uh, as to uh, help this move along a little quicker? Uh, being that there was good faith exercised on this end and, and, uh, bad advice given from someone who was in a position to be trusted? I would recommend if your local fire chief issue them a temporary use for the time being until they get their plans reviewed. That's the correct way to go about this. I believe it's the same fire. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, We're, I'm in Manila. I'm first. I'm yeah, first but that's why we have a fire department. No. no. So, so your no, fire no. district includes Royalton? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're on the North Royal. Oh, Tenet. North Royal. Okay, South Royal Tin would be white. Is is that an option that uh, just to get us by for a little while? I mean, that, I mean uh, Ryan isn't going to approve it if if we don't meet all the before the wedding. Ryan's right. coming out before the wedding to make sure everything's up. There's no safety issues. Ryan told us that. Yeah. So I mean, if if we have the issues, he's not going to allow us to have that wedding. So we got to make sure that all. And I mean, we're looking at maybe the bathrooms downstairs. Maybe we could just drywall the insides and then leave everything exposed on the outside so that so we can could see. still inspect it. Sure. I mean, we got three bathrooms. All are all of them have to be handicapped accessible, even the one upstairs, because they're all in the bathrooms. Yeah. I was just wondering why I thought maybe we could just have one handicap, but it got to follow all the new codes. So we can work with Ryan. Um, yeah, yeah, I would think that that would make a lot of sense if you work with Ryan on that in terms of, you know, if you, uh, now I, I, I missed the conversation here, but you're in a different uh, uh, fire jurisdiction. Yeah, it's not why we got You're in a manless fire jurisdiction. And so, I mean, if Ryan's willing to, you know, because if we're talking about a matter of a month or so, give or take, you right. know, I mean, if you could have a temporary use from your local, from your fire to, as a, as a give me over and with an understanding that Ryan's going to be out there inspecting, right. you know, so that way plan review, it's going to get approved, you know, then we should be able to be hundred percent when it comes to the commercial building code. Because we basically do. everything's already done. I mean, we had to tear out two walls, we had to put in footings down five feet, sure. and, uh, <laughs> anything that was rotted, we had to pull floorboards out. So I mean, we're all up to code already. Yeah. It's just getting all the final inspections done before I can, Close. And most of the wiring, that's all done by Master Electric. That's all in conduit. Most of them. All of it. We got all of the emergency <laughs> lightings up there. We got all the lighted exit signs. I mean, anybody that wants a tour can come on. So it sounds like this is a conversation you could have with Ryan Dyer as well as the fire chief of Manawa to see what their comfort level would be and how it would work out. Well, Ryan pretty much told us that already that oh, he's willing to work with us. Okay. Sure. So, yeah. So okay. Okay. Yeah, so. Joan will submit the plans to the state today. She goes, she wanted to make sure because Bob called her and called us and says, no, no, I'm legal to do it all. And we didn't have to send them to the state. So, that's, so they'll be sent in. So I don't know, maybe maybe the townships and the zoning need to. But that sounds like we have to give them over. With the yes. Potentially work with Brian Geiger yep. unless in the temporary use. So yep. uh, with your okay. local fire chief. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 How to make that work? Okay. Yep. Sound, sound like a plan. So I mean, like the July 31st is a class reunion and so far 15 people responded. It's my class, so I mean, 
You're well under 200. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. But the, well, in September 10th, uh, it's just the reception. I mean, no, uh, the September 10th was your friend wanted to have his one year old birthday party. It might be just his family, 20, 25 people. Sure. He just says, it's a, it's a big place. I don't, I want to, my kids to run around. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. So, I mean, it wasn't weddings or anything. Yeah. Just August 20th is a wedding, and then September 19th is a ceremony. And then they have the reception. Well, it sounds like you guys got a plan here to get yourselves ready to go and, and fully legal. Working with legal. Working with <laughs> right. yeah, you thought you did before, but it sounds like at least we have a way to make this work for you to, you know, short term and long term. Mm -hmm. So, are you limited to a wedding? Every four weeks, then? No, so that's, that's just personal. That's, <clears throat> yep, yep, that's, yeah, that's special. Oh, yep. okay. I'm like, oh, I thought you could book them every week. Yep. I know we go, got the 19th through 21st, but I mean, it's not like they're there. they come just for the practice, then yeah. they go home, then they got to come back on the 21st and help clean up. So, I mean, it's not like it's events going on all three days. Sure. Sure. Yep. So, yep. We look at those as being one event. Yeah, okay. We know yeah. that it, it turns about it's a weekend. Yeah. No, I don't want to book two weddings on a weekend. <laughs> I mean, any changes <laughs> if we add something to the site, boots them in. Oh, yeah. We've been, we've been working with our son at least. So, yeah, Joan will submit as soon as I call it in. Fantastic. She had trouble. She's trying to submit it last week and she had trouble because she had two different passwords and they had changed their websites. The more digital, then oh. it kept kicking her out. And then when Bob called her money, he says, No, 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 the same true. I'm like, <laughs> Okay. So okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you want to just stick around in case any more questions yeah. come up, I'll, I'll call for more testimony. Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Third call, any testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony? Are there any letters? No, okay. So, now this, this one is a, the 12 month anniversary. Correct. So, uh, is there another re another review in 12 months then on this one, or is this, uh, well, I think we could probably work with them um, administratively and make sure that they get their commercial building permit taken care of. And if they satisfy that, unless they see a need for another review, we could probably work to that and tell you complaints or anything. There was, there was no opposition, no letters, no, no testimony. So, yeah. Okay, so then we'll need uh, a motion to approve this conditional use permit. I'm standing there. I'll make the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Excuse me if I make a second. Is this a motion as a result of the review, not the vote? Okay. Right. This okay. this is the review yeah. uh, to approve approve the review of the conditional okay. use permit. I'll second. Thank you. Moved by Supervisor Hardy, seconded by Supervisor Federowitz to approve the review of the conditional use permit. Uh, we'll call vote. Uh, McClellan abstains. Federowitz. Or uh, Wilford. Yes. Uh, Hardy. Aye. Yes. Okay. I got yes. Motion carries. One abstention. Is there a motion to close the hearing? I'll make that motion. Thank you. Second. Oh, second. Moved by Supervisor Hardy, seconded by Supervisor Wolfer to close the hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Okay, we now go to the last of the of the hearings for today. Uh, the sixth one, the purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Warren C. Worth, located in the southeast of the northeast and the northeast of the northeast of section 34, town of Union. Lying along Church Street, fire number N7580 and N7584, Beck County, Wisconsin, parcels 19 34 71 76 and 77, and a review of approval of condition use permit application outdoor maintenance service, tire shop, truck, trailer, tractor, 
car restoration, sandblasting, also light industrial, machine shop, long-term outdoor display and sale, car sales, CP-033-021 in the rural commercial general district on approximately four and a half acres. Will the secretary please read the names of people notified of this year? Gary Shane, town chair, Sharon Olson, town clerk, Walton Street, town supervisor, Marcy Wentworth, town supervisor, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Kyle Young, Department of Natural Resources, Dale Resabet, Warren Worth, Opeka County Corporation Council, Joyce B. and Shane M. Aarons, Abderahim Benhamidi, Abderahim Benhamidi and S. Sedane, Ricky B. Chambers, Kathleen G. Donahue, Randa Greshamer, Philip D. Heinberg Revocable Trust, Franklin Howard, Dave J. John et al., Tro Survivors Trust, Trustee et al., Mark A. Schulke, Travis S. Schulke, St. Mark Evangelical Lutheran Church and Parsonage Simco, Daniel K. and Marcella S. Wentworth, Diane K. Worth, Warren C. Worth, and Charles W. Whitlock. I hereby then direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has not conducted an on site inspection of this property as it is a review. And again, I'm Jason Schneider from the Planning and Zoning Office will present the staff report for this review. Thank you. Um, so, again, we have another review of commission use permit that was uh, heard uh, was in October of last year. Um, it was a specific application through an outdoor maintenance service, which Included a tire shop, truck trailer tractor, and car restoration, and sandblasting, a light industrial use, which was a machine shop, and long term outdoor display and sale, which was car sales. So there were several conditions that were applied to this one as well, one of which that there be an annual review um, by July 1st. Um, so our code enforcement officer was out there on June 28th to kind of take a look at what we have going on for that. Um, so I'm just going to step through the conditions again, like we did with the other ones. Um, the first one being the 10 foot high privacy fence shall be constructed around the entire property prior to any work being done. Um, by July 1st, the privacy fence shall be erected along the north property line and the west property line, finding the road setback requirements. Applicants shall contact the fence installer to verify that the proposed construction techniques for the fence are appropriate. The review of the conditional use permit shall be conducted after July 1st again to evaluate the fence has been installed. The privacy fence shall be at least 30 feet from the road right away and 63 feet from the center of the travel path. So, when our code enforcement officer was out there, there are fencing materials that are on site, um, but the fence has not been erected yet. Uh, Warren did state, and he was in attendance here today, Warren said he plans to start erecting the fence this weekend, which would have been July 1st of 2022. Um, the township also met on this to kind of discuss where their position was at with all of this. Um, it is known that Warren had a few life events that did kind of set things back a little bit in terms of time frames for it. Um, I know Gary is here and will uh, provide testimony along with this as well. But the township, I believe, is recommending giving an extension on this particular condition until October 1st of 2022. Um, I'm just going to keep going through the conditions here. Uh, parent two, no work may be done on Sunday mornings. Um, they are not operating yet. Parent three is also an operating condition. They are not operating yet. Parent four is an operating condition. They also they still are not operating. Parent five was no junk or salvage is allowed on the property. Um, at the time of inspection, there had been a white truck, flatbed trailer, white car, a skid steer, a tractor, a forklift on the property, which is visible from the road. Flatbed trailer had a red truck cab on it that was previously located elsewhere on the property. Parent six, parking area for the vehicles being sold shall be paved or gravel and fully contained by the fence. There are not any vehicles currently being sold from the property, but there is some gravel that's been uh, piled up on the property um, for that uh, sales. Parent seven, there'll be a minimum of 27 parking spots. Um, this is tied to the, the business operating again, and they are not operating yet. Parent eight, maximum 25 cars, they are not selling. Nine, all grass in front of the fence must be kept mowed. First on site 
show that it had not been mowed, but uh, June 28th, the grass had been mowed. Okay, 10, no more than two inoperable vehicles may be kept on premise. Doesn't appear as though there's more than two inoperable vehicles on the property. All vehicles, equipment, except for the forklift, with different locations from June 21st, date, June 29th. So it's an area. U for parent 11, that's where we're at today. And parent 12 is in the storage of hazardous chemicals, and there's nothing to be an operating from the property. So, just to reiterate again, I um, believe the township was in, uh, in agreement that, that they should have an extension of the offense deadline from July 1st to October 1st. Um, but we do have the town chairman in attendance today, um, especially since we need to thank him for coming today. So, uh, hear from him directly and also the uh, property owners and attendants. Well, um, thank you, Jason. I'll call for testimony. Is there any testimony in favor of this application? Whoever wants to come first? Let him go first. Yep. Hey. Yep. Please raise your right hand. You swear a testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yep. Thank you. State your name and address for the record. Warren Worth, um, E6375, State Road 22, Upper Creek, Wisconsin. Yeah. So I'm just the, the business isn't, you haven't had a chance to get it going yet. No, I mean, I can't do business till the fence is all up. I mean, and I never enter in here before, but I mean, there's nothing, there's been improvements, but I mean, <clears throat> the fall, I was going to put rock in front and then a six foot fence on it in the front. And then so it don't look like a prison, you know. Uh, and I got the rock in the ground, you know, I put some places like two feet of gravel, you know, so, you know, I'm doing everything to last a long time, you know, I just didn't throw up the fence. I mean, I agreed to have fence up. By July 1st, it just didn't happen. I had a guy that was in come and put it up and he just didn't show up. I mean, I cut the brush line on the other side to put the fence up. I mean, I bought more fence, you know, thousands of dollars worth of more fence. I mean, I'm going full speed forward or forward, it's just life happened. I don't know. I just, you know, I got first, you know. The first line, all the polls on the dinner. I mean, you guys told me to go seek advice. Well, I didn't think it was that bad. Everybody says 10 foot fence, you don't want nothing to do with it. You know, they're all scared of 10 foot fence. So it kind of scared me a little bit. So I put that on Facebook and nobody wants to put up a 10 foot fence. You know, and the fence builders, they want to sell you the fence. What would be X of more than a hundred thousand dollars. You know, I don't have a hundred thousand dollars to put new fence up. And I mean, the materials I'm using, you know, in the front, I use regular steel, but it's got a um, stainless steel sleeve on it. So I mean, it'll look good for years. You know, I'm using good stuff. I mean. So in terms of your time frames, Warren, like that October 1st date, is that something that's. Mm -hmm. And what if it's done before then? Before then? I mean, there's just right. somebody's just got to come home. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we started pounding posts, you know. I don't know. It, it's work, but I mean, it takes three people to pound posts because they got 100 pound posts because they're 14 foot posts, you know. Yeah. And the uh, forklift and the air compressor, I mean, that's what's used to uh, pound posts, you know. That's what stuff's laying there, you know. And the stuff on the flatbed trailer, that stuff is the one out. And one more thing, I thought, you know, everybody's allowed two vehicles per lot that don't run. Why am I got two lots and I'm only allowed two lot, two vehicles? That's what I wanted. Was that a condition? Or? Yeah, it, it, it's specifically uh, stipulated on your conditional use permit to say that no more than two and a half vehicles may be kept on premise. So this is what was agreed to by yourself, the town and the committee. I grew for. For two lot, I mean, I got two lots. Or two fire. Yeah, that was a condition of approval. Yeah, this that was a condition of approval. 
why should I get, I'm commercial and I got a 10 foot fence around, why should I get things more than anybody else? Well, let's let's focus on the, the fence even. All right. So we're not there, and, and in fact, I mean, you don't have one to an hour. I don't, but I mean, I want to be, I want to, you know, why? Yeah. yeah. So I think taking this in small bites is probably the best way to, to look at this, right? You want the, to get the fence completed by October 1st, because we got to make sure. No, no, is it the whole fence completed by October 1st? Or see, the, the town, or the town wants the first, between me and Pinebrooks and Schulke's. Okay, That's so what I remember. Time. Yeah. So you kind I, of prioritized one stretch there. So are, are we all on the same page here? Yeah. Then, on yeah. That? Mm -hmm. And privacy screen around the whole thing, even the church forest land. I think I was talking about the township level and they had some good points about that, right? Just because the church owns it right now doesn't mean it's always going to be on the church. So. Well, we but the stuff's only last five years. I mean, you know, I mean, the the, the privacy family. screen. I mean, that's all they warranty it for. Sure. You know, that's been another thing. Trying to get that good stuff, you know, the 10 foot stuff. The good stuff ain't really in stock. You might do fives, but I want to buy a 10 foot. And you know, I, I don't believe that we were the ones that introduced the 10 foot. No. I was between you and your. Yeah, you agreed to that, right? So I agreed to that, but I mean, that you had introduced them. That was what the neighbor was going to be okay with, right? But that's just one neighbor. I mean, it's the whole thing. It was 2,300 feet. I mean, sure, sure. We, right. But well, that's what you guys have talked about. And that's what was presented. Yeah, that's on his side. Yeah. That you can see from his side and stuff like that. But I mean, a church. Can't even see the parking lot in the church. Well, it's it. The thing is, though, Warren, is that you we the the conditional use permit is has already been approved. That's what you've already agreed to. Okay. So okay. we're really not in a position right now to okay. uh, change what you've already agreed to. Okay. What we're really okay. talking okay. about today is what was it was it done. Okay. So so typically the way we do it, and as was in this case. Uh, the conditions were presented by the, the the local, the neighbors, the town, and and then uh, we go along with that because that's that's been our best uh, results in keeping the neighbors happy. Yeah. Is there any other questions from the committee? No, just just comment. I mean, those three. We're not part of this. So we don't have a clue. It doesn't going. even. This, yeah, this this was a, a Frigo Cheese Factory in Simcoe property. So there's there's a couple buildings, and then there's there's a good sized lot there, and there's a, a low road frontage on the state highway. Here. It's it's in the curb, so he has he has access on. 22 and, and uh, I believe there's a driveway going through to the other street to the east to the south. It's all on Church Street. Yeah, Church Street. Okay. Yeah. Let me add something. It was a property, the Frigo Cheese, when Tony Union didn't have zoning, the cheese factory got zoned residential because he didn't care. That's kind of when it was used as commercial. And then the cheese factory, the guy who bought it, and zoning come in, it just got zoned residential. But it was beforehand, it was used as a builder to build bullshits and stuff like that. You know, only before the guy that I bought it from. But we got the and zoning we, corrected. Yeah. When you what, went yeah. through the first yeah. steps here. Yeah. I just don't have any comments, but thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I challenge him quite a bit a year ago because my brother in law and his son does fencing. Valley all over. A 10 foot fence is unusual. Yeah. And we're worried about wind damage and wind did take come down pretty easily. Can you go back to the township and, and review the CUP and have that changed, or, or is that just a done deal? What is the normal fence size for something like that? Well, yeah. eight, eight foot. Eight eight is normal. It is normal. It's that, that or lower, extra or two, lower, right? Yeah, that extra two feet really makes a lot more leverage with the wind. And it's harder to keep it standing straight. So for safety concerns, you probably should really look at that. So, but the, so the, the issue with the ten foot fence was that that particular all these issues were already talked about 
when this was first being uh, contemplated. The, the 10 was, foot came from this. So the neighbor had kind yeah. of said that they had wanted a 10 foot fence and Mr. Werfman agreed to build a 10 foot fence. And so, so the, that's one neighbor or all then, the That was so one, one neighbor. But one then neighbor. what was agreed to on the permit was that it would go around the entire property. And so this, this very situation, this very conversation slash debate has already occurred last year when we were going through this. There was already concern back then of a 10 foot fence. And Mr. Wortha has still agreed to build a 10 foot fence as based on what we've heard from the neighbor as well as what we're hearing from the town. And so it's a bit of a sensitive issue in terms of where it's going to to. I mean, it's right in the heart of Simcoe. So there's some residential area around there. And like Ryan was saying, I mean, the approval was based on some of these promises that were made, including that type of fence. So it's hard to say where we would have ended up if we wouldn't have. Been right. That time. right. It's hard to, we can't go back in time. So what is the cost of that permit that he applied for the first time? For the permit for the zone yeah, that, that, he's, that he's following right now. Cost of it? Would have been $600. Six, so he's got $600 committed to that to get where he's at. Okay. $10,000 for a fence. How much? Over 15000 for these fence. But the, 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 the real, you know, the. Yeah, I, I mean, the, I mean we're, the, we're the cost is more so the ability for him to run his business. So the as a conditional use permit, these conditions are contingent upon his, his ability to run the business that he wants to run out there. So in order for him to be able to properly operate his business, he needed to have these conditions in place first. Right. And these are all agreed upon back then. But like the car deal, there's two lots, and if it was just one lot, why wouldn't you just um, cheese factory go to commercial? And that again was all mitigated all through the discussion. Is there any other questions from the committee? Uh, just one comment. This Cindy brought up a good point, and I don't even know why we have to do this, but if he wants to change the rules and everything, he's got to start all over on the local level. Yeah, then move back through. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Start, start so he has that option. He has that's that option. option. Just to clarify, exactly. I think that was a good question. That's a good point. So, I mean, there's no further questions. I'll call for further testimony. So, if uh, you want to just stick around for a little yeah. while, and uh, is there any further testimony in favor of this application? Yes. You swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Please have a seat. State your name and address, and uh, give us the truth. Well, my name is Joyce Aarons, and I live right next to his property. My property joins his property. And I noticed he was working very hard to get the, the place clean for he could put the fence up. He had to get a big equipment out there to root up trees and everything just to start the project. And I think you should be given time to do that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any further testimony in favor of this application? Yes. Gotta swear you in again, Gary. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Another different hearing. <laughs> you swear testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. State your name and address again, please. My name is Gary Shane. I live at N 8851 Ridgeview Lane, Manor, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm chairman for the town of Union where this property is located. Uh, we had our meeting on July 6th talking about the uh, failure to meet the original date for the fencing. A lot of discussion went on. It was majority of our meeting. Warren was at our meeting as well. And after a lot of discussion and questioning, we did agree to extend 
the fencing requirement on the west and north side of the property to October 1st, because he failed to meet the July 1st date. Uh, he has got the post now installed on the west side of the property. I actually watched some of it being installed. It's quite a process. And he still has the north side of the property to install the whole post per our extension to the 1st of October. That includes putting the fencing up on the post as well. We agreed to extend the time. We want his business to succeed. So we didn't want to jerk the bug off. Yeah, and uh, he's, he's not conducting business there yet either. So Gary, are we to understand that this October 1st deadline is meant to be the the last extension and so from at least from the town's perspective it's for the uh fencing on the uh west and north side west and north side right. yeah but I, but in terms of going forward with this you're from the town's perspective that is meant to be as far as you would ever want to go in terms of any additional extensions if it's not going to be done by then but my understanding the town correct correct okay one time extension and that's in the minutes of the meeting, and Jason's got a copy of those minutes. The uh, Frigo factory shut down about 30 years ago. I can't exact date. Uh, it was sold to some other people, became residential, because when the factory was operating, the head person at the factory lived upstairs above the factory, which was typical. Cheese factories. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Third call, any testimony in favor of this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third call. Any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony? Are there any letters? No. Uh, does the planning and zoning office have a recommendation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we would recommend, um, in line with the township's recommendation, to extend the, the deadline for the fence on the north and west of the property until October 1st. Okay, so. Any other questions from the committee? We'll need uh, a motion for the approval of this conditional use permit. Ex extending again. Yes. Yeah. Extension to October. You want this, this this fencing condition extended to October 1st? As presented. As the west and north side. The west and north side. Okay. That's okay. Somebody want to make a motion to that effect? I'll make the motion since the town is supporting of it. Yes, but I'm thinking too, I think they've already made the decision to extend it. Right. So yes, I would second that. Thank you. I would uh, respect their assessment on that. Right. Moved by Supervisor Fenwood, seconded by Supervisor Hardy to e extend this fencing condition on the north and west side on this conditional use permit. Uh, as part of this review, roll call vote. Uh, abstain. McClone abstain. Wilford? Yes. Aye. Edwards? Yes. Nygaard? Yes. Motion carries. Is there a motion to close the hearing? Make a motion to close the hearing. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Supervisor Hardy, seconded by Supervisor Wilford to close the hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so now we're on to some bullet points here. And uh, Dean A and Tony L. Feel revocable living trust request to rescind conditional use permit. Well, and sticking with the theme of wedding barns, <laughs> this is the wedding barn day. <laughs> so we received correspondence from the 
needed the teals saying that they're too busy with the other business that they have operating in Appleton and wanted to rescind their approval um, for a way or a private reception that we have to um, The ordinance requires committee uh, motion to uh, accept that for it. And I think that's what we're recommending in this particular case is just a motion to rescind the approval based on the applicant's request. Okay, I see Evans here today. Now, I do have a question. Um, in the event that she should change her mind again, would she start from square one? We're starting from scratch. Yep. Okay, very good. And what is she still allowed to have friends and family events? Same as everybody else. Yep, special events, less than 200 people. Um, once a month. And family. the state guy did say that family is brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, and cousins. Sounds like blood relatives, right? And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I don't think we're going to do DNA testing <laughs> because I, I don't know that she's having events there, but I'm speculating they will have friends and family events there yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure she's busy with her other, other projects and uh, has uh, some very time consuming things with her rentals and other businesses. So, yes, I did talk to her and she said she wants out of it. Uh, I do think with the other, I find it ironic that we have two of people applying for wedding farms and one bailing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I would speculate with all of these that when they are uh, made up to spec, the cost is going to exceed the revenues to such a point that they will change their mind. Yeah, also. Ruth and Dan, I've got a lot of money in that, that project over by Bear Lake. Yeah. And the market will get saturated to some point. That's the, uh, they, won't, they won't have enough business. In uh, the city, we have finders plus those that are out there. Yeah, I think the market's going to get saturated. Yeah. What we would ask Evan uh, from the county's perspective is if you just keep in touch with us, if you whatever you you're in terms of your eyes and ears on the ground, if you hear of anything going on out there, just let us know so that we can document it. If we have to take further action, then we have we have reports. I would do that. I, I, yeah, the rest of it I got have was uh, third party information, so I'm not going to comment on that. Sure. Thanks, Thanks, sure. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we need a motion on this. This would be a motion. Okay, okay. so we, what we need is a motion to rescind the conditional use permit for Dean A and Tony L. Thiel Revocable Living Trust for this wedding barn venue based on their request. Based on their request. They requested that it would uh, be rescinded. Mr. Chairman, I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Supervisor Federowitz, seconded by Supervisor Hardy to rescind the conditional use permit from Dean A and Tony L. Field Revocable Living Trust uh, at their request. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Motion carries. Okay. Broadband expansion subgroup update. Sure. So I just got a little bit of an update for you guys in terms of work uh, done to date on that uh, that recently approved uh, broadband expansion subgroup. So as uh, as, as to kind of bring, reiterate that the whole point of this is to number one figure out where exactly the areas within the county that are left that we need to put broadband. And so the, the first step in that process was to create a composite map that shows all of the known uh, areas of broadband availability, uh, known contracts or known projects that we know that are in process, and also to overlay on top of that all the broadband towers that we are, uh, have put in place as well. The problem that we ran into very quickly was that when we put together that map, it shows that the entire county is already saturated with broadband internet. And there's a couple of reasons for that. 
The biggest reason is because there is a known problem with the way they do their mapping at the Public Service Commission. So uh, Joan Balweg, Senator mm. Joan Balweg, has already been in conversation uh, with the, the city of Wapaka and Wapaka as well, Wapaka Online, in terms of these issues. And she took those uh, complaints to the, to the state. And I will tell you, so the, here's the problem. It's all based on census blocks, census tracts. And so what happens is if one person within a census tract has broadband internet, the entire, the entire block is seen as being covered. Oh. And so it, it, what it does is it creates a false sense of reality. Uh, the other problem that we have is the data that's being reported by our providers doesn't match their actual coverage maps that they advertise. And so there's a, a mismatch between what their, our providers or all of our telecoms that we have within the county and what they can actually provide. The, the reason why this is a real problem for us is because in order for us to be able to apply for broadband grants, we have to first prove that these are areas that don't already have broadband internet. And so if their mapping shows that they have broadband in that area, why do we need to put any additional dollars into this area? It's already shown as being done. And so when Joel and Senator Baldwin was able to have a conversation with a public service commission and also I'd say Representative Peterson has been involved in those talks as well. Uh, and so what's happened is they have understood it and they're in the process of changing it. And they want the FCC to take the lead in this because these providers, telecoms are required by law to report this information to the FCC. The FCC then gives this information back down to the states. That's where this all comes from. So the state wants the FCC to take the lead on this. The problem is that it's gonna take two years before those maps are done oh. for us to be ready to go with this. And so there's a couple of ways we can handle this. The first way is to just go forward as is, just creating our map showing basically the, everything being covered, and then we still go forward with uh, a broadband grants in areas that we at least anecdotally know where these areas are. And then it is in our grant applications, we go through a more rigorous uh, proof of these really are being overrepresented on the maps. There's problem with the map, you know, so that's a possibility. Dennis, and his last name, it's a signature, it's not, it's Khalila or something like that. He's the guy in charge of it. I, in conversation with him, that's what he was saying in terms of our goal round for that. If we can prove to the state that their mapping is wrong, they would allow us to still move forward with it. So that's a possibility. The other possibility is that we do something completely different. So I have another idea that I think is a little bit out of the box, but I think it's gonna be even better. And that is to set up a local grant process at local county level grant process. So recently the finance committee has recommended that a million dollars get placed uh, for broadband expansion that has yet to receive county board approval, but using that dollar amount as it stands for an out for conversation sake, what we would have is a local match of a million dollars that would go toward all these uh, providers, the telecoms that already exist within our county, have them come to us with projects to, to uh, expand broadband in areas where they know where these deserts are. We know, and, and so in our conversation with these telecoms, they already under, they have a far better understanding of where these deserts are than the Public Service Commission does, frankly, that we do. And so for them to come back to us and say, hey, there's these areas that it was never economically viable for us to go, but if we can give them local match monies, and if they then want to use that as match monies to go forward for, for state monies or infrastructure money, that's good on them. The idea is that it'd be easy money to access. We'd cut out the red tape. It would be just a we just have a group and this is, we haven't decided this on this yet. That's one of the reasons why bringing this to the committee as to whether or not this expansion group would be the, uh, the people who would be reviewing these projects and then approving them. Or if we would be feel more comfortable having them coming to the planning and zoning committee or a combination. I mean, these are all, these are all just ideas at this point. 
The reason why I like that idea is because it's open, it's available to any telecom that we have within the county that has a good idea as to how they can better our service. And it's, it's a lot easier to access this money than it would be to go through the state broadband uh, office right now, primarily because of this known mapping issue. Any telecom that wants to get uh, internet right now or an expansion project, they're going to have to go through the same hoops that we would have to in terms of proving that these areas are not only already covered. Case in point, last year, I well, was that last year? There was earlier, uh, a couple of months ago, I went in front of finance committee and I asked for some local match money for a charter expansion project in the town of Wyoming. It had been in Wyoming, Helvetia, in portions of the town of DuPont. We did not get that grant. Part of the reason why is because that area already has coverage. We know the area doesn't have coverage, but it didn't show it at the state level. So when the, these companies submit their, or they, they have their monopoly areas like TDS and, and whoever else, and is that what they're, I'm guessing, is that what they consider their coverage area, whether they've got fiber buried out there or not? And is that, maybe that's what the state's going by. It's it a, is. It, it, the other part of all this is that we have the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, the RDOF. So this was an auction that was handled a couple of years ago. Charter Spectrum received a large amount of areas within the county. Um, and, the, but the, and the problem is that those contracts are, they're given six years to build those out. The majority of the town of Dayton, a lot of the eastern side of, uh, of Opaka County was won by charter. So the problem with this, though, is that when Charter Spectrum first won that auction, the prices associated with putting that in the ground are a lot different then than they are now. And so the speculation, and I, and I, I, and I and the emphasis on speculation, is they may, they're just not going to go forward with it. Because if you take a look at the Ardoff map statewide, Charter has huge swaths of areas that they're, they're, they, they're, they have said they're going to be putting fiber in the ground. They're, it's already known that they can just, they can wash their hands of it, they can never do it, or they can do it next year. My conversation with Mike Hill, who is the government liaison for Charter Spectrum, he had told me that they have stockpiles of raw material and they hired a small army of people to be able to actually implement what they have. I'm taking him at his word, I don't know. He had said that they're looking at being able to build all this out within either this year or into next year. But I, I, but that's these, I, I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. They're doing something out by, on Wyland Road out by Rawhide, I don't know. And look, that was kind of some bigger, Big, well, some are big and then down further there are small, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> AT&T has a fairly significant project where they, they have a contract with Rawhide to uh, give a transmission line, a fiber optic transmission line See, to Rawhide. Yeah. Yep. They're working on it. It would be nice if this, this grant program could be something worked out with the state that uh, there'd be a way to come put in a claim for some state money after the fact. I don't know that it can be done, but, sure. but by doing what you're talking about, you proved that there is, is a desert area. There isn't anything out there. And we went ahead and go ahead and did it. And uh, could you reimburse us for being proactive? Sure. I don't know if that's possible or not, but, but uh, at least it can go on. Right. You didn't allude to the federal government. That might take years and years. Uh, so the yes. So the, they they supposedly approved oodles of money also. They have yeah. gobs and gobs of money. Yep, in the infrastructure bill. And so we're still <laughs> waiting to find out how that money is going to get actually in, uh, implemented. And so it was supposed to be uh, May was when the guidance was going to get sent off. I mean, we're, we're sitting here July 12th, and I haven't I seen anything. Two years from now. Uh, we don't yeah. know. And so it's it's a really interesting thing what's going on with broadband right now, because if there's so much money in it, and I mean, you drive around the county, there's all kinds of projects that are being done. Amherst Telephone is doing a lot of work. Frontier is putting in fiber. Solaris is putting in fiber. You know, AT&T is uh, servicing Rawhide right now. 
you know, and so there's a lot that's being done right now. And the same thing is happening throughout the state because of all the ARPA monies, because of all the, the, the state broadband monies that's been made available. And so it's, there's a shortage on raw supply and there's also a shortage on consultants. So the idea was initially with this broadband expansion subgroup was that we would take this money and first we'd get all the data that we know from our school districts. That's why we went to the school district to begin with because they have a vested interest in broadband expansion. So we wanna make sure that we get them in the loop. Then we would take a look at hiring a consultant and they have them determine where these holes are. But the problem though, is that they have access to no better or different information than what I have access to myself. And the thing is, as soon as you get that information, it could be obsolete within a couple of months because of all these projects that are going on right now. A lot of these projects that are happening right now are proprietary information. And so this isn't the type of thing where you can call up Solaris and say, so where exactly are you putting all your fiber? Where is all your areas that you're looking at expanding? Those are, those are for them to know and other people to find out as it happens. Yeah. The only way that we know about these projects is if they apply for public-private partnerships where they're looking for local match money. Then we understand and have the understanding of what the project is. So it would be good putting good money after bad if we hired a consultant, because in the end, the data that we would get back is not gonna be good enough for us to really make good determinations. So that's why I like the idea of a local grant money, grant match, because what we're doing is we're putting the burden of proof back on the telecoms to prove to us that these areas are not actually served by broadband. So then they, they get it. So they're the ones doing the work instead of us doing the work or us paying somebody to do the work. I like that idea. Let, let the phone company do the work. That's their business. You know, they're the ones that are going to be charging the customer and make it work. Right. And, uh, yeah. There's still pitfalls with this as anything. As anything. You know, right. um, I mean, but the, the biggest pitfall that I see with this is that, you know, we've already seen problems with Amherst Telephone and Charter Spectrum why they are both trying to move into the Dayton area because they're starting to overlap a little bit. And it doesn't make any sense to have fiber optic cabling one on either side of the road, you know, but that's yeah, yeah we don't want to be paying for that. We don't be paying right. for that. We don't be duplicating if, efforts. If they do that on their own, that's their business. But yeah, we we don't need to be paying for that. Right. Yeah. So in terms of concept, I mean, I mean, obviously I'm not looking for approvals at this point because this is just an idea. Um, we don't even know how the county board is going to move forward when it comes to the, the Arbor request. Um, but I guess that in terms of update, that's that's what I've got. Can I ask a question about the, the broadband towers? Certainly. Can they be taller? It's like the one that went out in on, I think it's on Hatton Road. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can go about four blocks on the road and you can't see it any longer. Yeah. Is that an option? So the one on X and Hatton had to be that size. Oh, because? Because of the, so the, the setbacks related to those. And so those towers are not designed like cell towers are. So these broadband towers are, they, they don't have the stress points right. built into them. So that okay. if they were to quote fail, they would just fall. Yeah. And so they have to be, the, the, the setback is the same as the height of the towers. Right. And that site, the way it was situated, because it's kind of like a kind of like a pie shape. Yeah, it is, yeah. and, and so we weren't able to, that was the tall, in short, that's the tallest tower that we could put for that parcel. Okay, all right. Now, luckily, that site was what's interesting about that is that it's really flat. There's a lot of farmland out mm -hmm. there. And so the uh, the computer system that the WPAC online uses to determine the coverage area on that, it actually is pretty effective. We can go pretty far with that. The bigger issue we have is the one on East Road, the one in the town of Dayton on the uh, that landfill yep. site. So that one's 120 feet, same as the one on Axe and Hat. Uh, the problem with that is that the shadow, so like Miracle Mountain Way, kind of runs just to the south of that where that tower is or where that landfill is, and we don't know that we can service all of that subdivision because in order to get to the top of the tower straight down, we got to somehow get past the treetops right. 
because it's, 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 you want to be on top of a hill, but you want to be too close to the hill because of the trees. Right. So um, it, it, the, the short, that's the long answer to your, uh, your question. The short answer is no. Uh, we, we can't take an existing tower and just add, add on to it. Because the everything is designed and engineered specific to the that tower, right. the the foundation, the setbacks. When I like went like mile where the crow flies, and I follow back online, they said no. Really? <laughs> yeah. They know it. Maybe put a little tower on top. Is there just is better just a tree or two tree, in the way? There's trees. Yeah. There's trees. Yeah. And it's not trees that you have control over, meaning oh, no. you can't cut down or not. Can you get them drones? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing that we are looking at, and, and so right now we have, uh, there's a lot of uh, interest in these towers. Right now we're hooking up uh, four customers a day okay. uh, to internet based on these uh, broadband towers. And so the, the thought though is that once we get to the point to where, because we have a spreadsheet that was put together when this was all being built, we have a, a spreadsheet of all the people who are interested in getting on to hooking onto these towers. Once we get towards the end of all these people that have already signed on, now we're going to start to be a little more aggressive in terms of marketing and also using these towers as starting points of what they call pops or point of presence. So we can take that from this tower to a silo. And then so that we can we can still get creative in terms of how we can get to other areas. So we already have ideas. Um, Rawhide is actually one of them that we we're looking at because unfortunately that project that AT&T is doing, that's a transmission line, that's not a feeder line. There's mm -hmm. a difference. So all those people on that road can't hook onto that fiber optic cabling because the contract was solely with <laughs> Rawhide. And so we, all those people are not gonna be able to get fiber optic cabling. And so, we're, but the, and the problem is that area it kind of acts like a bit of a valley going yeah. through there, and so line of sight can be a bit of an issue. But we, so we're already working on putting on a, a small tower in that in that valley. Then we can work along. We have ideas that we're working on with Wapaka Online, so we can hook up these little mini towers on people's mailboxes to kind of kind of create a, a, a network that follows the road, but. That's what's kind of cool about this technology is that we can be really, uh, we can be creative in terms of how we can get into tight areas. We can do it quickly and cheaply too. I brought the cabling is still incredibly expensive. Okay. Thanks for the information. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then we're, we're still discussing the on-site process and uh, maybe if you want to clarify what, what uh, our, our bylaws are our, our, our uh, what what part of being on the zoning committee involves. What what's what's on the books as far as what what is expected of us? Sure. So as far as the ordinance is concerned, it requires on site similar to public requires on site. Reviews are different because in theory we've already been out there for it. I know we have a little bit of a different situation that we have three new members for it, but we'll eventually settle. That's right. Um, you know, and you know, as we've talked about before, we have an obligation. You know, we're making important decisions that impact people's lives, uh, their day-to-day -day lives. It, it means something to them. So even if we're going out and looking at a farm field, we know that we're looking at a farm field. We know the people that are in the neighborhood that are going to be impacted by it. So it's incredibly important that we perform on sites on these properties. It's probably the methodology that's deployed. I mean, right now we're doing them individually, and I think there's some benefits to that. The past we've done them too, but there's probably some benefits with that as well. Um, but I can't stress enough. I mean, if we're making decisions that happen in my neighborhood, I sure want to know what's going on. And I sure want to make sure that the people are making decisions that are not acting flippantly towards it. You know, we want to make sure that we, we know what we're doing. So the bylaw, the ordinance requires that we, we visit these sites for so my belief on this is we all come from different directions. Uh, I've got three hours this time in the traveling. I had to go from here to Rawhide. There's no neat way to do it. Right. I went the best I could. I stopped at Pine Grove when I set up trying to figure out how to get in there. I said, well, you got to go down and take the Rawhide Road in. And they told me, so I wasn't out of the way. The other one is I had to go up to uh, School Section Lake. Well, that's kind of your direction coming down. I have no reason to go up there. 
And then the other one was Wasserdale. I didn't go up over the old car show time because you know what that's like. <laughs> you know, it, to make a long story short, with today's meeting, when we're two and a half hours in, I got five and a half hours in this mess. And I really believe that that on-site travel time, which would usually start at the courthouse, should be included in our minutes. So, my belief is that I'm over four hours for this thing, and so I should be paid hundred dollars, not seventy dollars. I'm not going to work for ten dollars an hour. I don't need the money. I'm just telling you right up front. But I don't know how you guys feel, but that's where it's at in my mind. I've been to meetings where they last fifteen minutes and you get paid seventy dollars, and I've been to meetings where you ask five hours and you get paid a hundred dollars. Yeah. And you got to look at the whole thing in perspective in the county. That's how you have to look at it. I don't know how you people feel. Well, uh, I'm, I, I want this committee to be uh, filled with people who want to do this. And if that takes paying for your time and, and all that to, to keep it a full committee and not, not have somebody in it that's not going to be a, an effective committee member, we, we do need to uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and I guess, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm just going back for the years I've spent on here, uh, and uh, Joe supports someone too. Uh, typically, if, if some of us got together, I usually joke because I came from the north, and somebody would hop in my car, and two of us that were together. But typically, a day like today it would be considered over four hours. Yes. Because time we got in the car. I, I would assume most of the time. Well, were some, some weren't. Yeah. Some, some weren't. I, you know, because if quicker. you go any place, yeah. some were quicker. You got a half hour going to one place. You know. But anyway, keep talking. Yeah. But anyway, so a lot of those meetings did go over four hours, and that's what we wrote down. I mean, I can remember our chairman at the time, why he's dead now, Jim. You know, Oh, the way it's five minutes over, four hours. <laughs> but it wasn't the end of the work. Okay. But I think I think that's fair for some of us. Like for me, yesterday when I had two other meetings down here, I went up, I took caught Wazerud Road and went over. I could save the county some money because they didn't have to put it down the next day. Mm -hmm. So however we do it, I think let's use it as a judgment day. Today I would consider four hours. Over. And I'll be real honest, in the last two months before, I had over four hours each time. I, but that's okay. I'm not going backwards. No. But that's the way I look at it because you got travel time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. It, uh, it's and, not the end. And, 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 and if you wanted to time myself from the courthouse, I'd be fine with that. But I, what, I'm, what, I'm what, five what? minutes or 10 minutes away. You know, I'm not sure. You know. But Dwayne, the other side of the coin, you know, he worked that in, but sometimes. It isn't going to always work in his interest that he's coming here. You know, he could be going over to Marion, over to Big Falls or something. You know? They got the advantage coming from the north down. Correct. Sydney's got the disadvantage going from the south. And, and but there's so many places to find. <laughs> so, so for me, I, I've got errands different directions, and I... But it's got to be in the last 96 hours, too, your errands have to be. Yeah, 96 hours isn't, isn't that's, too bad. But I, you know what I'm saying. That's yeah, I know, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. So I don't think uh, there's been anybody questioning anybody's mileage submitted or anything at this point yet. Uh, and if they do, it's there's explanation for it. The other thing about doing it individually, we, we don't have any question at all about a walking forum. Whereas before, that was... Part of the reason we split up when we we start out here, but then as we met at the first site, well, then jump somebody ride with Dwayne, and a lot of times I ride with Dennis, and and uh, you know just two in a car or, or three, and so then then there was no question of a walking forum either. So uh, I would recommend on your sheet when you put down your miles, put on the time you put travel time. And then if the meeting goes two hours and that with your travel time gets you over four, then that's what you're compensated for. If it goes under four, let's say we only travel a half hour and we met two hours, then it should be under 
people. You know what I'm saying? How do we how do we want to kind of simplify and this and, and make this uh, uh, not uh, a big rigmarole and have some consistency? Can we just figure that we are going to have a four hour meeting and count, counting the drive time all the time? I think it would be pretty close because we've been having five, six, seven hearings for quite some time now. When I first got on this committee, sometimes there was only three. But with these last several years, it's, there's been a lot going on with building and we're still got a little catching up. And now, now we're still dealing with uh, some of the overflow from that with, with, with reviews. Yep. So we're probably gonna have dragged out. I'm hoping I'm not dragging meetings out, but but uh, it's just we got to give everybody the chance to speak their yep. piece. And so, I think you guys got to use some judgment on what the length of the meeting could be, because you can load it up to keep us eight hours if you want, or you can just say, "Hey, let's sure. keep it in perspective." You so know, we do try to keep it. Common sense. sense. There was a couple sense. of them that got bumped from this agenda to a couple of weeks. Well, I know everybody's in a hurry too. I understand yeah. that. So which I, it is a balance. You're absolutely right. We gotta we gotta try to keep things moving and we gotta try to keep the meetings within reason. From what I'm hearing, it's just the per diem that we're talking about. Yeah, it's more of a per diem issue. Yeah, we're under a sudden, obviously, it would be four hours if we had all done that. The downside's going to be too. Yeah. And then this is what we run into. There's there's a Mukwa, Caledonia, uh, maybe a Matson or a Bear Creek. And then there's there's Farmington and Dayton and, you know, there. They don't tend to be in one little area at this meeting, and then the, the, it's just how they come in. So, for simplicity's sake, and so that way we all know how to go forward, would it make sense at the end of the meeting if we could just come to a consensus that this is a this was a four plus meeting, four hour plus meeting? So then that way, because what happens sometimes with the clerk's office, or they they'll come back and say, "Hey, was this a you know?" So then that way we can head that off. Right, and then we get back from the meeting. We can send an email to Christy you put saying, it "Right on the sheet, there, for we can just put it right on the mileage sheet, right there." That's, yep. what, that's what I was just going to say, right? You so know, that way, it's just, it's just, yep. it's just uh, yeah. no. Let's do that. I got to get going too. <laughs> yeah, I got to get going too. Uh, the other question I'd say is: Are any? I know you're the you wasting the whole day now because it's afternoon. You know, if you get these meetings in the morning or in the afternoon. You don't waste the other half of the day. I was. I know Dwayne's going to get someplace, and I, I told work. some people. I said I'll be done at noon. Don't worry about it. Well, it's time to get out. Yeah, yeah, and it's hard for us to always know how long something's going to take. That's why. It, well, there's meetings before us sometimes too that we have to try to make sure we're counting that as well. Right. Yep. We, yeah, we yeah. try. We we don't try to keep you here longer than we have to. This this room is the spot to do this meeting. We we don't really because because of the AV stuff and the yeah. The connections yep. and and room for spectators. Yes, so we are all sitting on top of each other. So we'll make a motion to adjourn. Then. We are adjourned. Oh, we've got some more. Oh, yes, yeah, schedule July twenty sixth. Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> August, you got some? I got 9.30 down for that. July 26th. I will not be there. <laughs> August 9th. August 9th, we're also looking. August 9th? Yep. We're all Tuesday. 10 o'clock. Then we'll be at 10. Okay, good. Thank 26. you. <laughs> August 9th, what time? 10. You're going to be done by noon? Yeah. Well, we don't know. <laughs> I'll put it earlier if you're not. I'm going to say no. no. I got <laughs> yeah, I would. And then if we are, well, for sure. If we go to noon, we for sure got the four hours in. <laughs> August 9th, you said 10 a.m. And the other one was July 26th at 9.30. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, guys. And I forgot today, but you know.